I'm Erickson Blakeney on 107.5 WBLS. today uh we have company coming in mm -hmm. shelly garrett you know him he's the play guru he's coming in but also kanye west is coming through and so we'll have a chance to talk with kanye he hasn't been here pretty much since he first came out i like the fact that he hasn't turned his back on the experience as his money has grown longer and his star has risen higher um, also, we'll gossip about some of the stars today, including Geraldo Rivera, Beanie Siegel, Martha Stewart, Jay-Z, Nelly. Oh, and I've got the results of yesterday's poll question regarding the 14-inch poll. <laughs> the phone lines are open. 866-GET-WENDY. Listen, it is what it is. It's Friday, too. And welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. Did you catch this flashback? What's the problem with your natural teeth? Uh, they're not white, and yeah. I'm missing the front tooth. Yeah, oh, you're missing a front tooth. Right, so and he's going to put, like, a tooth behind one of them, so it's extra for that, but... But yeah. in the meantime, you have your red carpet smile. Yeah, I'm so happy. I can't wait. Good for you. Congratulations. You know, Thanks. the teeth are the window to the soul. Oh, yeah. This is right here. Miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Ow! Oh, it's the weekend. Ah, can you feel it? Ow! Oh. <laughs> I'm going to bed hey. as soon as I get off the air tonight. I'm so damn tired. Forget about it. No parties? No, honey. Oh, man. No. I'm, I've been trying to catch up with sleep since last Friday night going out. And then into Vivica's party on... Just, you know, you know, the weekend. You know what I mean? With the Palmers last Friday. Yeah, yeah, a lot going on. So tonight, I'm going to sleep. As soon as I get... I might sleep behind the wheel on the way home. That's how tired I am. And I'm going to sleep all day tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, I'm going to wake up and go to T.I.'s party. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh, the studio audience is very loud over there, Goose. Thank you. Artie and I are about to start our session of City Lips. Oh. Look, listen to the directions. How to use. Use clear treatment before bedtime every night for a minimum of 30 minutes, Art. Okay. And the color treatment throughout the day. And you must continue to maintain, you know, the, the City Lips on your lips. And improve your results. Apply a generous amount of the clear treatment every night before bedtime so that the, so that the treatment can absorb into your lips while you sleep. And what City Lips does, as Vivica Fox told us, it increases lip volume mm. better for the weekends. Yes. <laughs> it softens and moisturizes your lips. Oh. And it makes your lips look years younger. So, and it's recommended by Good Housekeeping. Oh, okay. Yes. So you can have an old face with young looking lips. Yes, you can have an old face and young lips. <laughs> young DSL lips. DSLs. So we'll try this. Oh, boy, you guys. Kanye West is coming in today. That'll be a lot of fun. Art, you did the research. Yeah, I got to look at the printout now. Well, he doesn't owe um, yesterday at the end of the show. Mm, you know what? I just... Thank you, Crystal. She's just a child. Look at you. Mmm. Sunkiss, not diet. The full sugar. She's drinking orange soda. Mmm. And tater chips. Oh. You sure don't want to know my chicken livers? No, chicken thank gizzards? you. You know, I had a doctor's appointment this morning, and I, I must tell you that I must have a biopsy on something. Uh -oh. And so I'm living each day like it's my last right now, just in case. The doctor said, you don't have to rush and do it. And I said, no, I want to get it done. And he says, oh, by the way, I want to do a bone density on you. Oh, my gosh, oh. what am I falling apart? <laughs> Goose, give me the test five. <laughs> it's time to move, time to move on. <laughs> so I had a bone density test. I want you to know that I have the bone density of an 18-year-old. So, you know, uh, that's all good. This little biopsy, though, thing. They just have to just put a real thin needle in something and pull something out and see what all's doing. Um, I said I don't have to get it done anytime soon. I made that appointment first thing Monday morning. I'll be in there. And it won't affect my voice, haters. <laughs> How you doing? No. <laughs> oh, boy, I'll tell you what. You got to stay on top of your health. You really, really do. Me, I think I stay on top too much. Like, I'll be looking for things. <laughs> you know, just like agitating the areas. Just looking for things. And then when things pop up, it's not even surprising. It's like, see, I'm on top of my health. That's why. Mm. Maybe I willed something. And that's why, you know, something showed up. Anyway, um, so Shirley Bassey um, did the vocals for Diamonds Are Forever. That's the um, Kanye West song. And she's not happy is what I was telling you guys yesterday towards the end of the show that, um, that Kanye West put this song together. She's 68 years old and she's a music legend and she's considering legal action against Kanye and Rockefeller Records after finding out that her 1971 hit song Diamonds Are Forever from the James Bond soundtrack was jacked by the world's most famous college dropout. Here's what she says. Hold on. Let me just... <laughs> Why do you do that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like a 40. <laughs> That's how I discovered radio. Oh. I never told you that story? No. Well, don't you know that my very discovery of being a radio personality had to do with a fatty and a 40? Get out of here. Oh, yes. And a lonely night on the fire escape freshman year in college. Wow. Do you want to hear the rest of the story? Please. I'm intrigued. The heck with diamonds. I, I told the story in my book. You said you read it three times. I did. It, it, that was two years ago, though. You forgot. Okay, I got to read it again. <laughs> well, it has to do with a 40. Well, don't tell us. Let everybody else buy it, too. It's my first book. Huh? Your first book. Wendy brings the heat. Yes, yes. Oh. Yes. Wendy's got the heat. Yes. Wendy's, Wendy's got the heat. Yes. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is that I put my name on everything, and there's usually something dealing with, dealing with some fire on everything. Right. Fire, heat, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, I didn't know it. 
I didn't know anything about the song before its release. It's a white lady. Is she white? She's a white lady, yeah. Have, Ow. A, have a picture. Have a picture. I didn't know anything about the song before it was released. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> he didn't ask my permission to have me singing on his song. Ah! Mm-hmm. I didn't even know it existed until I heard him perform it on Live 8. Yeah. Ah! I didn't even hear it from his record. I didn't even hear from his record company, which wasn't very nice. Ah! Ooh. Legally, it's something I want to look into because he was very cheeky. So one way or another, he's going to have to pay me a lot of money. Ah! That's her picture right here. I can't tell whether she's white or black. No, she's she's a white lady. She's white. Yeah, she's white. She's white. I can't tell. Yeah. The verdict's out. Yeah, she's white. So I should have read it mixed. Yeah. Legally, it's something I want to look into. Because he was very cheeky about it. So one way or another, he's going to have to pay me a lot of money. Ah! That's good. She's mixed. Yes. I, I can't really tell. All the point is, is that Kanye's coming in on the show today. Yeah. So he could talk to, to him about that and other stuff. Coretta Scott King is out of the hospital. I'm sure you guys have heard about that by now. She was released yesterday after more than a month in the hospital after she suffered a stroke um, and a mild heart attack. You know, she's facing a lot of therapy, but they expect her to make a full recovery even at 78 years old. The widow, uh, the widow of Dr. Martin Luther King um, had the stroke. It initially left her unable to speak and move her right side, but um, over the past five weeks, they say she's doing very well with the rehab and she's making progress every day. So hopefully she'll make a full recovery. Bernice King seems to be doing the the spokesmanship for this particular uh, event in the King uh, family, and she says, my mother has a very strong determination to succeed and she's looking forward to therapy and a full recovery. And she's very focused. That's very nice. Mm-hmm. All right, you all. Yesterday's people poll question. Would you marry a man with a 14-inch member? Marry, not date. Remember, we talked about dating is just to hit the skins and scram or hit it until you get tired of it and quit it. Marriage is like a commitment like that, like forever. Allegedly. 35% of you hosts said yes. <laughs> Sixty-five percent of women uh, and gay men said no. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Fourteen inches is just all too much. Thirty-five percent of people said that that's not too much, and sixty-five percent said no. You know, realistically speaking, maybe a novelty item, but not to marry it, Shakira. You understand what I'm saying? That's a whole different thing. Like my reasoning is, you know, having that knocking on your back at least three or five times a week for the rest of your life. Exactly. Look, Shakira's face tuned up like she smells a fart. Oh. Like, ew. Well, get ready, because here's the new poll question. And damn it, you better answer correctly. I can't see you, but I want to know more about you because you listen all the time. Are you currently dating your boss? And you know what that means. Not an affair. Just dating. What? Not in the fair, but just actually outwardly dating, right? No, uh uh. No, that's not what I mean. That's what you meant when you put this on here? Well, you can mean whatever you want to. No, I want it to mean are you having sex with your boss? Oh. Yeah, it can be that everybody in the company knows because he's not married or she's not married, it's not a thing, or that you're doing it behind a loved one's back. I want to know. Are you dating your boss? That means having sex. Why don't you put sex? Why don't you put it for what it is? I put sex. Why can't you use the word S-E-X, but you can use the word that's for a man's private part that starts with a C and ends with a K? That was making you laugh. Giving <laughs> yeah. you a slip. Yeah. Oh, trying to make me slip. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, keep it where you got it. We're here. He's queer. Get used to it. <laughs> hey. Wendy, man. I drove yesterday to get your book. That book is fire! <laughs> yeah, honey, you did it again, honey. You did it again. The Wendy Williams Experience. Oh, Bob Lee's on the phone. Hey, Bob. 
Hey, Wendy, we're live up here on 117th Street, Malcolm X Boulevard, you know, Lenox Avenue. And we're at Carver Federal Savings Bank, and we're having a great time. There's a world of products up here. And I'm here with the uh, the area manager of Manhattan, Marilyn Alston. How you doing? Tell us about some of the products. Hi, Wendy. How are you today? Hey, Wendy, just wanted to let you know that right now we are offering an 18-month certificate of deposit that's yielding an interest rate of 4%. Also, we have a relationship account. You know, it's all about relationships here at Carver. Um, and if you open up a checking and a savings account, uh, you'll get a preferred interest rate on the savings money market account. So we want some folks to come on down and do some business with us. I like that bounce protection. And bounce protection, no surcharges at Carver ATMs. Usually when you go to an ATM anywhere else, you know, you're paying a dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. yeah, here at Carver, we understand that financial empowerment is the key to financial freedom. And our product solutions help our customers gain financial independence. So come on down and do some business here at uh, Carver. Mm. The other thing I want to make all of the audience aware of is that Carver has been a permanent fixture here in the Harlem community for over 50 years. Uh -huh. We're not a big bank. We're not trying to compete with the big bank. give you that personal attention. What hey. we're doing today, we're going to give you a $10 card to match the $10 you're going to put in to open up your free checking. Bob Lee on 117th Street, Malcolm X Boulevard, Lenox Avenue at Carver Federal Savings Bank on 107.5 WBLS. Thank you, Bob. Shout out to everybody at Carver Savings Bank. Shout out to everybody in Harlem, too. So, it's a pretty nice day here. I don't know that rain is in the forecast or not. Um, what did Mike Wood say about the weather today? Is it, is it supposed to be rainy? I don't know. Anyway, um, Goose, I'm just doing stall time. I lost the papers that you gave me. Oh, here it is. No, no, no. Okay. Shout out to everybody in Stanford, Connecticut. Turns out Bob Lee's going to be up there tomorrow night. There's a live broadcast at Cafe Bahia at 320 Greenwich Avenue um, in Connecticut. It's an adult nightclub. It's going to be the BLS live broadcast. So it's going to be grown and sexy. And Bob Lee is going to be there commandeering the whole extravaganza. So that's tomorrow night at Cafe Bahia in Greenwich, um, excuse me, in Stanford, Connecticut on Greenwich Avenue. Okay. All right. So it's the Wendy Williams experience. I'm here until 7 o'clock. And uh, Kanye West is coming in today. Also, we have, oh, you know what's going on here locally in New York over the weekend, which we'll actually hear, find out more about. Have you heard of this event, Marry Your Baby's Daddy? Well, <laughs> the, listen, listen. There are a lot of people who produce a lot of babies or a baby, and they just never get around to getting married. So there's, there's this big event happening <coughs> on October 29th here in the city where they are going to throw you the wedding, you marry your baby's daddy. Hell, if neither one of you can make that decision, they want to usher you along by giving you an event, and we're going to find out more about it later on in the show because marry your baby's daddy's day is um, evidently a big thing that, that you all need to be put up on. Mm. And me too, for that matter, because, um, anyway, all right, uh, okay, BLS. <laughs> Paid for by Bloomberg for Mayor 2005. It's about that time again. The Wendy Williams Experience is searching for new interns. Come join the Wendy Williams Experience. Fax a cover letter and resume to 866-WENDY-FAX. Broadcast, journalism, mass communication, radio, TV, and film, and music majors only. All applicants must be over 18 years of age. Currently enrolled as a sophomore, junior, or senior in a college or university. Internship hours are 11.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Good luck and thanks for listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Oh, yeah, and if you don't plan on grinding, you can put that where? Back there. Hey everybody, the weekend's here. Bow Wow's movie opens up this weekend, Roll Bounce, with um, Charlie Murphy and Mike Epps and yada yada. And, you know, remember, a part of the ticket sales for this opening weekend is going to the Hurricane Disaster Relief. So, um, you know, for one reason or another, if you're going to the movies this weekend, um, rethink and maybe check out Roll Bounce. Um, dear Wendy, I loved that you had Jenny McCarthy on your show yesterday. She is my favorite Playboy bunny of all time. And she is so damn funny. Wendy, I mean, I'm a man of a certain age. I'm 32. But I love that white woman. And when you asked her if she would date a black man or if she's been with a black man, the drum roll went off in my head. I was like, good looking out, Wendy. 
You should have asked her if she would marry a man with a 14-inch Richard. I'd love to see how she would have responded to that. And that's from Barry Martin. Barry, thank you very much for turning us on. And I'm so glad that you enjoyed Jenny McCarthy yesterday. I had fun with her as well. So the fallout continues with Kate Moss. You know, she's responding um, to the press by apologizing to everybody. Here's her statement. I take full responsibility for my actions. I want to apologize to all the people that I've let down because of my behavior, which has reflected badly on my family, friends, coworkers, business associates, and others. I also accept that there are a variety of personal issues that I need to address and have started taking the difficult yet necessary steps to resolve them. In the meantime, while she's addressing her personal issues, the rumors are swirling around that rival modeling agencies have been contacting all of Kate Moss's employers, you know, the various people who still choose to hold on to her as an ad person, and what they're doing is pretending to be outraged customers, saying, you know, I hope you drop her. I will not patronize you anymore. This type of behavior, that's a good tactic. Yes. So, you know, so far it's worked for H&M, Rommel, Chanel, and Burberry. They've all dropped her. Also, um, there's this big newsletter in the U.K., and um, it's talking about how Kate used to trick all of her moochers who wanted to score free drugs from her. Like most coke fiend celebrities, the newsletter says, Kate Moss has to put up with all the pesky hangers on who just want to steal her drugs. So her clever solution to that was have two, having two entirely separate cocaine stashes. Mm. One was the premium bowl. And that was reserved for her friends and fellow celebrities. And then the other one was for just regular visitors. And, <coughs> excuse me. That bowl was comprised of the scrapings and the leftovers. You know. Yeah, that was real smart. I was surprised she put scrapings and leftovers in there. Why didn't she just dump some talcum powder and really fix them? I'll fix you. Why didn't she just have some glass grounded up and fix them and leave them with scars? Ooh. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Back when I was in Boston, there was this guy who, well, ugh, I don't even feel like going into that story. It's such an ugly story. Martha Stewart movie coming on this weekend starring Sybil Shepard. And I already know what I'm going to be doing on Sunday night. I was telling you guys yesterday, I know that the premiere of Desperate Housewives is this weekend. But you know what? I'll catch that at another time. I'm committed to Desperate Housewives. And I know I can jump in um, next Sunday and figure out what went on this, this coming Sunday. But this Sybil Shepherd movie, Martha Stewart, um, it'll be a while before this repeats. Sometime probably during the summer or something. So if you're with me, then be at CBS Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. In the meantime... I woke up last night, I guess around 1 o'clock in the morning, and was flipping through the channels and um, turned on MSNBC. And I saw some of that Martha Stewart Apprentice show, like the first 10 minutes, and then I went back to sleep. But, um, you know, it was heavily promoted, and um, it did not do the ratings business. So, Lost beat it. And Survivor beat it. Um, some other shows. But, you know, they'll keep her around. Have you seen the, the Martha Stewart show? Are you, are you remotely interested in that? A Current Affair has been canceled. Yeah, the new one doesn't have the same sizzle as the old one. And I've been a guest on the new one. But I do have to say, it doesn't have the same zoom. As a matter of fact, A Current Affair hasn't been the same since Maury Povich Maury. did it. Yeah. And Maury Povich certainly hasn't been the same since he hosted Cur Current Affair, because I don't know what that mess on TV called the Maury Povich <laughs> show is all about. But um, A Current Affair, this this you know new one, will air through October, they say. And then Geraldo Rivera is going to be taking over that time slot um, with his own Geraldo at Large show. Well, apparently... Yeah, and you already know Geraldo at Large is on the Fox News channel. I've been a guest on that show as well. Hi, Ro hi, Geraldo. Hey, Lisa. That's his wife. They both listen to this show. Anyway, um, his show on the Fox News channel is apparently 
supposed to be replaced with Tim Green show. And um, so everybody's getting moved around and Geraldo's coming back to network TV. Good for you. Good for you, Geraldo. I like him. I like what he says and I like to look at him. Dear Wendy, I would like to take a minute to blast Beanie Siegel. Why? He's He's got a second trial coming up. I mean, he pretty much blasted himself. Well, this person is a native of Philly. And they say, as you heard, Beanie's father died recently. No, I hadn't heard that. I'm sorry to hear that. No, I hadn't. He had a heart attack on the spot immediately after his son, Beanie's half-brother, pulled off the life support. To make a long story short, Beanie paid all of his father's funeral expenses, but not, did not put a single dime out towards his own brother. And this is his blood brother. The family didn't have enough money to pay for the funeral expenses. Therefore, he had to be cremated, which took three whole weeks. And Beanie has not offered to do anything. Keep in mind that his brother has six kids. Beanie is a hot trifling mess. Signed, Philly Nave. This must be the half-brother or somebody from his family. Yeah. Beanie owes you nothing. No. Beanie did the right thing. You said it in, your, in the top of the facts. He paid for his father's funeral expenses. It's not Beanie's fault that his brother went off and had six kids and can't afford to take care of them, if that's the case. Don't blast Beanie for that. No. Blast the brother for having too many children if he can't take care of them. I mean, right? Beanie has his own children. Beanie has... It's exactly. Even if Beanie had no children. Still. Beanie's money is not for the brother. No. Beanie did the right thing. You said he paid for his father's funeral expenses. So that's that. Sorry. Wendy, man. I hate the way they portray us in the media. If you see a black family, it says they're looting. If you see a white family, it says they're looking for food. George Bush doesn't care about black people. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. 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 Oh, Bob Lee's on the phone? Hey, Bob. Hey, Wendy. How you doing? We're uptown at the very bank where you did the grand opening at Carver Federal Savings Bank on 117th Street, Malcolm X Boulevard, Lenox Avenue. I'm here with some friends, and she remembers you when you came in. She was, I think you, you were pregnant at the time? No, I had just had my daughter, and she signed her picture, and it's still here at the bank on my, on her godmother's desk. Oh, you yeah, know, they got the Wendy Williams autograph right here on the godmother's desk. <laughs> All right, so what brings you to the bank today? Um, I intend on opening up another account, a checking account, mm -hmm. and, um, it's lovely here at Carver. They always treat you like family. And you got your $10 certificate, and you're going to add $10 to that? Yes, sir. I will. All right. We got the Smith sisters uptown. Everybody calls them the Wendy Williams sisters. Why? Well, my sister and I, Tasha Keys from Harlem as well. My name is Nicole Smith. I work here at Harlem at the Carver Federal Savings Bank. And what we say goes. And so that's why they call us the Wendy Williams of Harlem. The Wendy Williams of Harlem up here, right on 117th Street, Malcolm X Boulevard, Lenox Avenue, y'all. Carver Federal Savings Bank. Come on up and open up a free. Yo, did you catch this flashback? Today's people poll question is, do you attend church regularly? Regularly, in my opinion, is three times a month. Do you attend church regularly? Not once a year or whatever. Now, there are five people in the room who in this room attends church regularly. Oh, ain't no good gonna come to <laughs> us. <laughs> Nobody in the room. Who attends church once a month? Who attends, who attends, who attends church once a quarter? Who attends church on Easter Sunday? One person. Who attends church on New Year's Eve? Nobody. I love the nightlife. It's a shame. Who attends church when somebody dies? I do. <laughs> what about when somebody gets married? Oh, yeah. About to get free dinners in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there all the time. Fried chicken and greens and macaroni and cheese, please. Church got the best dinners. Five dollars a plate. <laughs> I like that lemonade, too, to go with it. Make you feel looking good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He's a jealous God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, I'm ready to have church again. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, I'm ready to have church again. 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 I'm ready
I'll beat you in the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Who wants all the equipment short up? <laughs> Now watch my car be the one to careen off the west side oh. damn highway. <laughs> miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. And don't forget about our people poll question. It's on the website right now. We're asking you, are you currently, did you change dating to sex? Yes. Are you currently having sex with your boss? I'm not right now while you're listening to the show. You know what I mean. Uh-oh. And that could be that you're married to the boss or that you're dating the boss and the boss is not married and you're not interfering with anything or that you're jumping off with your boss. But we want to know, yes or no. Go to thewendywilliamsexperience.com. Are you currently having sex with your boss? This gives me a little bit more insight as to who's listening to this program. Now, yesterday's people poll question is, would you marry a man... With a 14 inch, yeah, not date, marry, because that's commitment. That means that that's yours for life. 35% of you said yes. 65% of you said, aw, hell to the naw. Dear Wendy, I'm 37 years old. By the way, um, somebody told me that on GettyImages.com, you can see pictures of all the red carpet um, goings on last night at the um, Hip Hop Honors. And um, apparently I'm on. I mean, there also I haven't seen them. Art, can you go to that website, GettyImages.com? Okay, dear Wendy, I'm a 37 year old married woman with one child that's 18 months old and one on the way. Now I love my husband, and we do have an active sex life. However, lately I've been having some rather strong desires for taboo sex. I want to have the following sexual experiences after my child is born. Number one, sex with two men. Ooh. And she puts in parentheses, I know how to say the word for this, but how do you spell it? H O? <laughs> yeah. And I say that with a smile, but I, what is the word for that? Sex with two men. Menage a trois. Oh, menage a trois. Okay. <laughs> Number two, sex with two women. Oh, yeah. I have already had the sexual experience with one. Now I want two. Wow. And number three. Uh Oh, here we go. Sex with a man with a 14-inch Johnson. I would not want to marry him, however. Yes. Is there any place in the Philadelphia area that I can sneak off to in order to have these experiences? My husband would not want to take part in any of this activity. And in reality... I wouldn't want him to either. Signed, highly aroused in Westchester. Well, I don't know that you need to go to a particular place to find two men to have sex with. You just make the right eye contact with the right set of friends. Well, one friend, he'll get his boy. Exactly. (laughs) You know, and, and you can make it happen that way. And the same thing with two women. Or go to libations on Broad Street. Oh, what is that? It's like a gay. Is a, is a, oh, that's that place that. Um. Oh. Oh. Excuse me, Miss Artie. Wait, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. We almost pulled him out of the closet. Easy. It's a what? It, it, it's an alternative club. <laughs> <laughs> that's that place where Golden Girl always talks about she does? libations. Yeah, I, yeah. libations. I've heard her talk about it. Yeah, libations. Mm-hmm. Or Woody's or Hepburns. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Off of Walnut Street. <laughs> Off what street? Walnut. W- Wall what? Nut. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's right next to Chestnut. <laughs> Art, you've got one booty cheek, one nut, and one foot out of the closet. There you go. <laughs> Come on, Hal. That's yes, right. <laughs> um, woman, I wish you well. Um, I, you know... 37 married with an 18 month old and another child off the way, on the way. In all seriousness, I would keep all of these wanton, lusty things in your head and, um, and, you know, self pleasure. Or, or imagine them when your husband is, is, you know, taking you off. Because, you know, you're 37 and you're married. You've got an 18 month old and one on the way. You've got 
an overwhelming amount of responsibility. You don't need to be out here like that. And God forbid you bring something home, a herpes or the monster or anything in between. You know, so, you know, keep that in your head. That's what an active imagination is for. Dear Wendy, I need help fast. I work in an office in a cubicle and sit right next to a person that I thought was my good friend. She is at times very moody and doesn't speak. When she's like that, I give her her space. We all have these days and we, where we don't want to talk. Well, recently it got worse and she came in one day in one of her moods. I left her alone. Now, we were not speaking at all. Excuse me. Now we're not speaking at all. What should I do? We have friends in common and work in the same office. The tension is thick. I'm waiting by my radio for your answer. <sighs> Go out for a drink after work. Don't have this out in the office. Girl, I know life, you know, gives us our share of ups and downs and we all go through our moods. But what's really good, explain to her like you explained to me. When you have your moods, she doesn't, you know, you guys don't speak. When she has her moods, you don't speak. But this is beyond the moods. What is going on? That's all. I wouldn't have this conversation in the office either. I don't think it's going to take much to get to the bottom of her situation. Okay. Um, let's get to another letter. Dear Wendy, I need some advice. I wrote your show about eight months ago for advice about my sister. Even though I didn't mention any names or sign my name, she instantly just blamed me for writing your show. Now we really don't kick it because she feels as though I put her on blast because you stated on the air as advice for me to let her make her own mistake and that she was a dummy and many listeners called and, and faxed clowning her as well. Wendy, today my question to you is... What measurement, if any, should I take to start back chilling with my sister? I need advice on how to break the ice. We do talk, but we don't hang out anymore. It's basically just a one-minute conversation, and that's it. I feel like we are sisters, and maybe I was wrong for faxing you, but I just wanted to hear a different point of view besides people who I know. Signed, a sister in need. Okay. Go to the card store. And you're going to get one of those sticky, mushy cards that says exactly what it is that you want to say regarding the bond of sisterhood. And regarding how, at the end of the day, a sister is your best friend. Oh, they have these cards, I know. My sister sends them to me all the time. Not because we're fighting, but just, you know. Like, my, my mother's a card sender, just because. And my sister's a card sender, just because. My sister will get these cards for me and, you know, they'll make me all weepy and everything like that. And mind you, we're not fighting. We got a beautiful relationship. But there, there are, do you ever dwell in a card store and just cry? Oh, gosh, I hate it. Oh, I don't even, I, immediately I'm, I'm starting to, you know, get all choked up in the cards. Go to the card store and get your sister a card. Make sure the card says all the right things. One of those cards where all you have to do is say two and love at the bottom. The card itself says everything. And I'll tell you why it's good that you get a card that says everything as opposed to you having to write in it. Because when you get a card that says everything, it kind of shows that you spent at least five hours in the card store <coughs> with that person in mind looking for the perfect card. Don't send her a note card with a picture on the outside and then you have to fill in it on the inside. Mm -mm. Send her the card with the perfect words. That means that you really took your time to get the right card. Now, I don't know what brand of cards these are that my sister always sends me. She always sends me just the, the absolute perfect cards. But, um, you know, send her a card. Follow it up with a phone call. Chances are you'll catch her crying about how gooey the card is. You all hug, and that'll be that. When you fax me, I don't remember what your fax was about, but she didn't say names. She's just embarrassed because people were clowning. They weren't clowning her. They were clowning the situation. They don't know her. You didn't mention her name. You didn't even mention your name. I don't even remember what she faxed about. Don't remind me. We don't want to drudge this up again. <laughs> uh, what do I have on the, t on the clock there, Goose? Okay, terrific. Wendy, I was on my way home from work the other day during advice hour when I heard you read a letter from someone who wanted advice about gastric bypass versus the lap band. Well, I'm 28 years old and I'm 5 feet 10 inches tall. I had lap band surgery four months ago and I lost 35 pounds so far. I've gone from a size 
a tight size 24 to a comfortable size 18, 20. My goal is to be a size 12 because of my height. The lap band forces you to champ to change how much food you eat, but you still have to remain conscious of the types of foods that you eat. Gastric bypass surgery allows you to lose weight quickly, regardless of what foods you eat. However, no matter which type of weight loss surgery you choose, you have to make a commitment to eat healthy and watch the amount of food you eat. Now, here is... Hold on, let me drink some water. Now, here is what made me make my decision to get lap band surgery. The rapid weight loss associated with gastric bypass leaves you with saggy skin like Star Jones allegedly. (coughs) On the other hand, if you follow the diet of lap band, you should lose weight as if you were on an actual diet, which is 1.5 to 2 pounds per week. Along with exercise and toning, you shouldn't have any problems with sagging skin. Having gastric bypass surgery means that your body changes how it absorbs nutrients and vitamins and food. Also, you can never take Advil or Motrin again because of the risks of it damaging the lining of your stomach. So, if you suffer from cramps, your only friend will be weak-ass Tylenol. The good thing about either surgery is that you will rarely have the empty abyss called hunger driving you crazy. A website that I found helpful is, are you all ready for this? Because this is from Joy and Joy wants you to have this website if you're interested in either one of these surgeries. Stopobesityforlife.com. Stopobesityforlife.com. And go on to that website. Thank you, Joyce. This is very, very helpful. StopObesityForLife.com My girlfriend Lisa, you know, she um, had the gastric bypass surgery and she didn't suffer a lot of the different things that her doctor told her that, that, you know, are possibilities like um, you can't eat sweets, you know, your first fork full of birthday cake might send you earling to the bathroom and, you know, you want to test how your body reacts to sweets in your own house so nothing embarrasses you outside and um, oh gosh, there were a whole bunch of cans. Lisa didn't uh, fall into any any of those categories. You know, she's she's um, you know losing weight, can eat what she wants, hasn't had any adverse reactions, um, hasn't gotten sicknesses or anything like that. But you know, different body types affect different ways. But once again, that website is stopobesityforlife.com. And I would love to take your telephone calls right now at 866-GET-WENDY because it is advice hour and I'm taking advice from the phone calls in our next segment. So it's 866-GET-WENDY. You dial, the doctor is in, so to speak. Wendy, man. So I called you like three weeks ago about me and my boy had a threesome and how he touched my butt. He came to me saying that he really want to have sex with me. Well, you should have known that when he touched your butt. The Wendy Williams Experience. Listen, do you want to save as much as 50% or more on your prescription medicine? Did you know that millions of Walgreens customers already do? Talk to your Walgreens pharmacist about generic substitution. By law, generics contain the same active ingredients as the big name brand equivalents. This means that you get the same quality medicine for less. Generic substitution. With over 4,700 stores, you'll find a Walgreens just around the corner. And so many are open 24 hours. One more reason why Walgreens is the Pharmacy America Trusts. Yo, did you catch this flashback? Hello. Uh, hi, Wendy. How you doing? Hi, how are you? That's about This is Lyndon. Hi, Lyndon. Okay. I love your show. I've been listening for years. Thanks, Lyndon. It's like a reality show. Wait, I didn't call it a kiss up, though. I just called to make a point. Okay. As a car guy, you made a point about the spinner roof has been corny, has been, and all that stuff like that. But wait, wait, there was room for another pop lock for one reason. For first, first of all, and number two, you always dig up on the Louis, Louis Vuitton bag has been this great. What? Well, I was saying you always make fun of the, um, the spinner rim. Okay. Has been corny, has been. I mm-hmm. know, right? mm-hmm. But at the point, they weren't popular to the public. I see what you're saying. Okay, well, number two, you always dig up on um, the Louis bag has been this great thing. Yes. But you dig up, um, I mean, a poochie, I mean, that'd be something else. Yes. But, you, but, but, but to be fair. Yes. Um, you know, like certain words we use. As um, in hip hop culture, 
mm-hmm. it becomes if we certain people use it we don't use it anymore because it becomes corny mm-hmm. well that's what a bag Louis bag become so oh I understood that part Louis bags have become corny yeah and you pick it up all the time you always say this is it you know what, though? Uh-uh, not anymore. I haven't picked up a Louis bag since that damn Marikami bag. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not getting that cherry bag, and I don't. I no longer believe in bag of the season. Okay, I mean, a pooch, you always that big brand. You big that up, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. Um, you got to be a, I mean, a pooch. I mean, it's like exclusive. Nobody really has that. I mean, nobody knows about that too much. Mm-hmm. Average folks, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I say, but all of the time I come, as a car guy, I defend that point. You know, they're still exclusive. They still have nice one coming out. And people can't afford it. Hold on a second, Lyndon. Hold on. Okay. Look, you all. I didn't understand a word he's saying. Got him. This is it right here. <laughs> Miss a day. Miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Oh, boy, it's the Wendy Williams experience Kanye West will be in for the next hour. Yeah, it'll be nice to talk with Kanye for the second time. First time was when uh, his first CD was about to come out. And now that he's done blowing up, a lot of a lot of celebrities of his caliber have thrown the experience off to the side. Not Kanye. He's coming back in next hour. All right. But it's Vice Hour now. Hello. How you doing, Wendy? Good. How are you? I'm fine. I, got, I need some advice. Serious advice. Okay. Okay, my um, situation is I have a girlfriend. We've been going out for three years now. And she's a twin sister, identical twin. Uh-oh. And she, w- one day she had to go to work or she had something and we had big plans. So, so she won't disappoint me. She sent her sister. And when her sister and I went out, we were drinking and when we got back. Wait a minute, we, wait. Yes. Did, you, did you know that this was the twin sister with you? No. Actually, I didn't find out till what I when I finished telling you. We went out, we had some drinks and whatnot, and we ended up sleeping with each other. Okay. And two months down the line, okay. they both get a come to me and they like like sit me down and they tell me we we need to talk. So I thought, you know, what's wrong? My girlfriend tells me she's pregnant, and I'm like, I'm happy for it because I'm going to be a for I'll be a father. It's going to be my second child. Then her sister says, "There's a possibility that I might be her baby's father." The sister is pregnant too, or the sister is now since delivered the baby. No, they they're they're like seven months now. Both of them. Yeah. All right. At first, didn't you call this your wife, and now you're calling her your girlfriend? Which which no. is it? No, she's my girlfriend. Okay. How long have you been with her? Three years. Three, she said. Three years. Well, look, this is your this is your girlfriend's fault. It's not your fault. You didn't know who you were out with, and you didn't know who you were sleeping with. These are these girls playing that twin mess that you know should have left been left behind when they graduated from college. Okay, I just don't know if it, what should I do. Get ready to pay child support for one and get ready to be a, a, a father in the house for the other if you choose to live with somebody so deceiving. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you were deceived in the highest of ways. You're having a child with one that, you know, apparently you want because that's your girlfriend. And you're having yeah. a child with the other because you had sex with no condom with her because your girlfriend chose to send you out with your sister. Are you staying in this relationship? I, um, that's why I'm calling you. I don't know what to do. I already have a kid of my own, which I have custody of. I mean, were you remotely thinking about marrying your girlfriend of three years at any point? Yeah, kind of, yeah. That's why we were having sex without okay, no condom. I need, to, I need you to have a backbone as we have this conversation. Okay. Okay. Are you welcoming your girlfriend's child with open arms or even that one is taking you by total surprise? That one, is, it wasn't. It was kind of like I really, I wanted it. I was trying for it, yeah. So I, I would kind of, yeah, okay. I was accepting it. Okay. All right. So is there, are you, do you feel absolutely betrayed and hurt by your girlfriend, or are you still considering marrying her? I, I really can't marry her. If her sister's going to keep the baby, like she said, then, then it's my kid, then that's weird enough. Well, you already said that the sister is seven months along, so apart from adoption, she's going to be keeping the baby. Yeah. So I really don't want to be with her. My thing is, should I just leave and, like... 
the kids. What are the kids going to think? If they're boys, they're going to be brothers and cousins at the same time. Don't you think that? Well, listen, it's a whole freak show going on. What are you wondering how to uh, leave this woman? You just yeah. leave, you just leave her the way she deceived you with no warning. Leave her. <laughs> leave her exactly where you found her, right there with her sister and their stupid key, key, key childish pranks. And you okay. Just, and you just... Like I- you just make sure that you are emotionally there for your children, all three of them, and make sure that your child support is paid. And you leave those two right where you found them on the playground. That was childish on their part. Yeah, like, see, the thing is, I'm really, okay. like, I was really attached to her because, like, she was there since my son, since I got my son for oh, custody. Okay, I, I can't, um, I'm not a professional, so I've given yeah. you my opinion. If you want okay. further insight into what you should do with your situation... I would recommend a month of therapy once a week. Commit to that. Go to a therapist by yourself once a week to talk this out. I mean, really talk this out with somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just feel like... Okay. Tell us to the therapist. Okay. Thank you very much. I already gave you my opinion, though, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I mean, you know, what am I supposed to do? Uh, Hello? Hello, Wendy. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Fine, thanks. Um, I have a little family situation. Okay. Okay, my sister, uh, let me go, my father is a very religious man. And um, my sister, at an early age, emancipated herself and embellished some stories and things of that nature. Took my father to court and basically made him, you know, pay child support, even though she was emancipated, which he did. And they stopped talking for about two years. Um, at my mother's insistence, you know, he started talking to her again. And, you know, he kind of really couldn't get over the thing as to how she took herself out of the religion also when she emancipated herself. Yeah. So what happened is, is that recently she just got married and she had invited him to the wedding and he didn't um, feel the need to go to the um, reception. He said he would only go to the ceremony. And she basically told him, well, don't bother. If you're not going to give me 100 percent and come to both and don't come. Um, and now there's like this whole big grudge between them. Uh, her husband got involved. He doesn't want my father around at all. He doesn't want my father in their life. And he's basically have kids in the future. My father's not going to be part of it. And I'm kind of stuck in the middle, and I really don't know how to go about anything. When you go around your sister, don't mention your father. When it you- happens all the time. No, when you go around your sister, don't don't entertain that conversation then. Don't even okay. entertain it. Leave. I mean, the second she mentions your father or something like that, pick up your keys and leave. And don't you bring up your father either. And when you go around your father, don't mention your sister. You know that there's bad blood between both of them. Uh, but they're also grown people, so they can handle it between the two of them. I know it must be tearing you apart that they don't get along, but that's that's their battle. Well, it's more like like my sister is like she wants to she wants to um, have a relationship with him at some point. And she even says it to me. She's like, you know, I want... I want him to come to me and talk to me in person instead of calling me or leaving me emails, which is what he did. Because so he did want to apologize to her, and she never really picks up the phone or returns his messages or anything. So I don't. I so mean, so then why don't you set up a get together? I uh, tried. Between, they told me to stay out of it. No, 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 no. no. We're, neither one of them knows that the other one is showing up. Invi- uh, in, in, do you live by yourself? I live by myself. Yes. In, invite them over. Invite them both over. For brunch, so it's not late. Like a Saturday brunch, 1 o'clock, yada, yada, yada. You want to show your sister your new sofa or whatever, and you want to um, show whatever to your father, and they both show up. You lock the door. They can scream and yell as much as they want. But if you invite them over early enough in the day, then before the sun goes down, hopefully everybody will be hugging or at least have a better understanding. But she needs to leave her husband home, and, and it just needs to be the three of you. And then some, and then somewhere with, with just... Uh, the three of you, even you need to fall fall back and go in the other room and leave the two of them. That's how I'm about to do. The only thing that's up, my only problem with that is that they've talked about this before and never met heads ahead on it. No, 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 um, no, 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 no. This is you arranging it. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Bye. All right. Kanye West is coming up next hour for the Hour of Truth. And since it is the Hour of Truth, I will share with you what I can regarding red carpet last night and my adventure. Keep it where you got it. Wendy, man. So I called you like three weeks ago about me and my boy had a threesome and how he touched my butt. He came to me saying that he really want to have sex with me. Well, you should have known that when he touched your butt. The wind. All right, everybody. I don't know. 
don't know if Kanye's here or not, but I have time for a This Just In on last night's VH1 Hip Hop Honors Red Carpet. Wendy Williams' husband saw red and huffed the gossip nista out the door, putting her coverage of the event for her VH1 show, Wendy Williams is on fire on ice. Sources on the scene reported that Wendy was on the red carpet with her camera crew recording for her VH1 show when her husband shoved through the crowd and demanded she leave. Yo, we leaving now. I can't believe this bullshit. That's the quote from Wendy's husband, Kevin Hunter, who was heard yelling. But Wendy was apparently moving slowly. Yeah, she was in the middle of interviewing Big Daddy Kane. She was just saying goodbye. She wasn't moving slowly, but... Slowly, too slowly for her enraged 250 pound, six foot one boo, who then turned around to her and yelled, Give him the mic and get your ish. We out of here now. With that, the gossip queen picked up her stuff with the quickness and bounced. Wendy's confused camera crew stood there not knowing what to do next. Oh, Kevin's mad, I think, because there was a problem with him getting in. Ow. One of them was overheard saying. End of story. I will say this. Is that a blind item? If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. That's all my comment is to that. That's exactly how it happened. There was more to the story. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And about, and by the way, shout out to Steve Lindsay on hair and makeup who just left the room. I left so fast, I left my lipstick in my compact in his pocket. <laughs> he just came and gave it back. <laughs> how you doing? And I apologize to Big Daddy Kane, but Kane, remember, if I, can't, if I don't stand for something, I will fall for anything. Kanye isn't here yet. Uh, his people, they're here. Okay. So they're still waiting on him downstairs. Okay. So Kanye West hasn't pulled up yet. So I'm um, good. So we have other stuff to talk about here. Um, hey, Harlem Hardy. How you doing? Um, you know what David Spade said, which is really funny? Have you seen his new show yeah. on Showbiz? On, you have seen it, Art? I love it. He made a joke about Star Jones that, um, that they're using the dress that she donated to fix the Superdome roof. That's funny. That's a funny joke. I like Spade. I like Spade. I saw him at a party one time. Oh, you know what? You have to watch tonight on TV. I don't know if you're going to be watching, but, you know, think about it twice. Dateline NBC tonight at 8 o'clock. They're going to be talking about this white couple who gave birth to twin boys, and one was black and one was white. Oh. Yeah. That's coming on tonight. Isn't that worth, before you take your disco nap to go out, it comes on at 8 o'clock. That's not in the way of the party. Watch that and then take the disco. I don't know how it happens. Mixed sperm? Yeah, I don't know. Wow. I've got to look at the wife's body language as she answers because it's all in the wife's body language, not the husband's. Medical miracle? Mm. Cheating hoe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Freaky couple? Oh. A little of all three. I don't know. I'm watching. Tonight, NBC at 8 o'clock. I thought you was going to sleep when you got home. No, I'm watching that first. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, because I can sleep tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you know about Foxy Brown, I mean... All right, let me just do it this just in style, and I'm going to give you my opinion. And I would love to know your opinion. Rapper Foxy Brown to face ear surgery. Rapper Foxy Brown says she will temporarily stop performing to undergo surgery for her hearing problem. Brown, 25, made the announcement to reporters on Thursday outside of Manhattan Criminal Court, where she is facing legal problem problems over her August 2004 fight with two New York City nail salon workers. Brown, whose new album is titled Broken Silence, refused to discuss the cause of her hearing problem, but said an operation was planned soon, according to published reports. I think that little Kim taking up all the spotlight at this particular point has got Foxy Brown scrambling. And where there might be a touch of ringing in the ear or a touch of, you know how, um, you know how you stub your toe. But if you're looking for publicity, then as opposed to just being your toe hurt. You broke your foot. No, no, excuse me. Your whole leg might be, have to be amputated. You know, you zhuzh it up. Do you, 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 you understand what I'm saying? 
That's all. You know, she might have a little constant ring in the ear or, or whatever. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I don't know. There's four people in the room. And don't go by what I say. Do you think that she's looking for attention in light of the little Kim sympathy thing? Because Kim's a, raise your hand yes or no. Raise your hand yes. Three people. Goose, what is that? Oh, I know. The Trini Massive stays together. Okay. Yeah, Go Goose is with Foxy. Fox, I think you're looking for attention. But that's okay, because we're sitting here talking about it. So I guess you've gotten the attention. Is that Kanye West from his car? No. Was that somebody weighing in on Foxy Brown? Yeah, yeah. What'd they say? Somebody said she probably got that way because some artist kept banging on her head. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Who that is? That reggae artist that she was messing with? No. no. Oh, oh, yes. Yes, that's him, yeah. Yeah. The reggae artist who was named after the the car. Wow. That she was, was did they have a relationship like that? They were together. Mm -hmm. Hey Zoe. How are you? Hi. Zoe, you look glowy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, she comes right in and starts doing work. There she is, picking up the papers. Yeah, so I just think Foxy's looking for attention. Um, I would love to know what you guys think. Oh, by the way, they're looking at Sienna Miller to replace Kate Moss for Burberry. You see how fast they close in the ranks? Yeah. Kate Moss was dropped from Burberry. So Sienna Miller is, um, they say, could possibly be the face of Burberry. The fashion label said that they're in talks with the famed photographer Mario Testino. And um, all they need to do is get the model in place. And then they'll start shooting that uh, spring 06 campaign like ASAP. And, um, you know, so, I mean, you know, it happens. Diamonds are forever. She's mixed, by the way. Her, her mother is from um, Yorkshire. I think that's what somebody told me. Uh, Shirley Bassey. And her father's from Nigeria. And Kanye West owes her no money. No. By the way. But um, Kanye's going through it, too. I got to tell you something. And I am so glad that he's coming up here because I, I love to ask ask artists straight up. This To me, this is a great show to come to because, yeah, we talk a lot of smack up here. But in with the smack, an artist can always come in and level the truth. Or, or level the truth as they want us to see it. Now, according to reports, Kanye West is not having the best week. They're saying the allegations are circulating that Pepsi is about to drop him or already has dropped him earlier this week. Plus, the Shirley Bassey um, lawsuit consideration for Diamonds Are Forever and... You know, I just want to know what, what uh, Kanye, where his head's at, what he's thinking. I mean, we're going to give him a really good talk today. And um, I appreciate him coming up here. But Kanye, you are now working on CP time. Wendy Williams doesn't care about late people. Oh. <laughs> that was the remix. <laughs> no, you know, we have plenty of chat about to do until our man gets here. MC Hammer um, <coughs> excuse me you don't have to turn it down for every innuendo goose because it just gets in the way sometimes if it's like a one cough cough I mean you know I'll give you the cue if I'm going to go into like a fit you understand how's the show going so far today yeah cool I'm a little distracted by this biopsy I've been ordered to have. I must tell you, I'm playing it off, but you know. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm just going to draw a little bit of sellage just to see <laughs> whether I'm about to be done in. Right. By the G-O-D. Damn. Oh, how can I sit here and make jokes? Let me clean my office up. Because <laughs> if I don't laugh, I'll cry. <laughs> Let me update my will. Oh. oh, boy. All right. So anyway, MC Hammer um, is praying along with his wife for the survival of his new son. Did you know that? Well, 
The little boy's name is Samuel, and he was born three months premature, weighing only one pound. Exactly. Yes, he was there at the MTV Video Music Awards, but his mind was back at home with his wife, Stephanie. And by the way, he only showed up in Miami to perform, and then he got on a plane and went right back home to Stephanie and their other children and little Sammy. Um, she had undergone labor while she was still only six months pregnant, and uh, she'd given birth to baby Samuel, and he was in critical condition. Now, um, Hammer, who's 43 years old, by the way, and an ordained minister, um, said that, you know, the best they can do is pray. Um, here's a quote. Tears rolled down his face as he and Stephanie prayed for their baby, but they have a lot, to, they have a lot of faith and they're confident that the baby will survive. The boy's condition has improved a bit. He's up to two pounds. And, um, you know, so, you know, you hang in there, Hammer. Hammer looks like he's had a little surgical work on his face. Are you looking at me in the don't cry for me Argentina kind of way? Why are you sitting there like that? <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen. I don't want to give up my lifestyle. No. <laughs> <laughs> I got to find another Wendy. I was going to say, if I hear you moonlighting on any of the pictures. So like, your resume is in now. And when, and when I beat this thing. What's the fastest number? And I live. <laughs> I'm cleaning house. Oh. <laughs> no, you know what it is? I had um, a little thyroid appointment today that I made as soon as Chief Justice Rehnquist kicked the bucket with thyroid cancer. And you know I have thyroid disease. And you know I'm a bit of a hypochondriac. So I'm looking for trouble, even if there's no trouble in my body. I'm always looking. Oh, my gosh. I'm always. That's part of my problem. I'm always looking for some damn trouble. So when Rehnquist passed away, all of a sudden I started, almost immediately when I heard the news, I started getting feelings in my throat. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like something was jumping off in my throat. And I was swallowing and. You know, <laughs> take it. <laughs> Do you know? Um, in my mind, you know, I'm in conversation with you, but, but, uh, but over here in the other side of my mind, I'm thinking about, hmm, how is my voice resonating as it comes up over my vocals and past my thought? How is this food going down? Yeah. You know, what does it all feel like down here? So my thyroid doctor is, um, is the. Uh, I made sure not to make the appointment for right away. I just wanted to lock in an appointment, but I purposely made it for weeks after Rehnquist because I wanted to marinate. I don't know why I do that to myself. Like, I want myself to suffer kind of sort of, you know, be my own self-help person. The first thing I do when I get up in the morning is, you know, do a mental body scan to see, is everything working? Yeah. Can I feel everything? Okay, now how does my throat feel today? <laughs> you know, like that. So I went um, to the doctor and actually, it's just, it's just a little uh, nodule that, that has been there all along. And, um, and I coaxed him into giving me a prescription for a biopsy. He said, Wendy, you don't need this. And, you know, why wish you wouldn't worry? You know, it, you know, his ears all that. I said, no, I want it. Oh. You know, <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> you know, I'm going. Uh -oh. So I'm going. Hey, man. So I called you like three weeks ago about me and my boy had a threesome and how he touched my butt. He came to me saying that he really want to have sex with me. Well, you should have known that when he touched your butt. The Wendy Williams Experience. And the Wendy Williams Experience and the Steve Harvey Morning Show in the mornings. And we got it going on. We're that got it going on radio station, everybody. Hey, it's Friday afternoon in the city. Hey. All right. And um, let's bring Marianne Reed in. Marianne Reed has a book called Marry Your Baby's Daddy. Marry Your Baby Daddy. Excuse me. But the most important thing about Marianne is that she's doing this big event on uh, September 29th. Um, Ten unmarried couples with children. Will be. Hi, Marianne. Hi, nice to meet you. You too. Here, this, not, here, this one's your microphone. Okay. Ten unmarried couples will uh, be married during a landmark event called Marry Your Baby Daddy event. Um, now, is this more to promote your book? Because this is a spectacular way to promote a book. Or is this for real? It's for real. And I think a lot of people think it's just a publicity thing. But I'm saying, if you think it's a publicity thing, what's so bad about marrying people? That's the question I have for people who may think it's just for that. 
but really, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing because 10 people's lives are being changed. Yeah. They're getting an all-expenses-paid wedding, baby mamas and baby daddies, um, celebration of black love and black marriage for real. Now, how do you pick the couples? Well, what happened was in March, we got like over 500 calls from here to Arkansas. We had grandmas. We had white people, black people, Hispanic people, Asian people wanted to sign up. And we had a three-step process, and we narrowed it down to 10 couples. Wow. And let me tell you, Wendy, it wasn't easy. Now, how did these people find out about this, this event? They found out about it in the Daily in News. In the Daily News. That's right. That's I do right. remember that was in the Daily News. Oh, that was big. So now... How are you paying for all of this? Or you have sponsors and stuff? I have some great sponsors. Good. Michael Shane Bridal in Brooklyn, New York. I have Pat uh, from The Wedding Connection in Queens. I have Cassandra Bromfield, D. Okay, Willis. blah, 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 blah. Your hair is gorgeous. Thank you. Are you a married woman yourself? I hope to be soon if he's listening. Okay, um, so you um, you have ch children? No, I don't. Okay, so where did you come up with this concept? Well, you know, Because I would think that you would have been one of the women in the struggle, and then it finally happened to you, and you're like, damn it, you can marry your baby's daddy, even after three kids or, you know, whatever. How did you... How, uh, so, you have a boyfriend. You don't have children. Right. You don't have a boyfriend. I do have a you, boyfriend. You, know, you, you, you looked kind of <laughs> crazy when I said that. Now, what do you, well, what's because, going on? Um, I'm, I'm seeing somebody really nice right now. So, so yes, he's, he's not my boyfriend. Your, he's okay. my man. How long have you guys been together? Oh, like a couple months. <laughs> oh, Lord, you're being led by the crazy woman. <laughs> well, look, Wendy, mm -hmm. um, I had a broken engagement. Oh, okay. Oh, Talk. Right, girl, I went through all the drama, and I finally got myself together, and I was like... It's time for me to, like, meet and really appreciate a good man. But to answer your question why I did this yes. was because I wanted to be married. And I felt that what was going on out there was, like, this love-hate thing I between understand. black men and women. And I said, if I could give it to some people, I could get it for myself, too. You know, give to receive, So you're looking for karma to come around and bring you well, that man and the kids and stuff. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that. I think I'm, that this is a very generous thing on your, your part, you. particularly because you're not one of the people caught up in the cycle. Right. I'm trying to do it right. I'm trying to do it right. I, I just turned 30 in April, and I'm really trying. I mean, I've been through a lot, and I want to just give my, my sisters out there a real good positive outlook, turning baby mamas into wives. That's my objective from here to L.A. Okay, so nobody else is a, eligible to enter this because you have your 10 unmarried couples already? Well, that's true. We're getting, oh, they're all getting married next week, September 29th, but we may do it again next year, so if anybody's listening, they what's can the, go What's to. the website? MarryYourBabyDaddy.com. <laughs> <laughs> That's real easy to remember. Yeah. And they got the contact information on there. And really, it's a good charitable event because it's an effort to strengthen two-parent homes in our community. That's right. And I listen to you all the time, and I can tell that you're very pro-marriage. And this event is pro-marriage celebration For of people black who are love. willing to put in the work. I, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's not something to play with. I mean, sometimes you're just better off having a baby with him and sending him on his way. And that's real. That is real. These, <laughs> you know what I mean? These couples live together, Wendy. They've been living together for like five or more years. Yeah. They were just stuck in a rut. Yeah, well, there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with the Goldie and Kate thing either. I mean, I can see it from both sides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Goldie Horn and Kate, uh, I mean, yeah. and, um, you know. Yeah, that situation. Yeah. But they got married, didn't they? So now, no, they're not married. Exactly. You leave well a damn enough alone. Well, they need to sign Here up you with come us. meddling <laughs> in people's relationships, Marianne Reed. So what's your book about? Well, it's about three women uh -huh. who actually have to marry their baby daddies in order to inherit three million dollars. Oh, love it. So at the end you're asking, are they marrying for love or for money? And you know there's the drama, Wendy. Of course. You got the girl who's been engaged forever. You got the successful career woman who has a man possibly on the DL, but she handpicks him to be her baby daddy. Oh and wow. You got a, another girl who's just stuck on the sex. So, you know, they're going back and forth, and the whole objective is, what are they <laughs> going to do at the end? Is it about money or love? <laughs> it's lovely. Wow. Well, this sounds like a nice tale, and it's not too difficult to read. You all, it's not a bunch of pages, 210 pages. Her name is Marianne Reed. The book is called Marry Your Baby Daddy. Yes. The website is MarryYourBabyDaddy.com. Are you going to get newspaper coverage so we can read the outcome of... Um, yes. Um, the New York Daily News on September 29th is running a two-page um, spread on our, our event, and we have some great media coming um, to cover it as well. And let me just say, I really hope that um, this encourages a lot of women out there who are living with their man who think 
think that marriage is not, you know, they're not deserving of marriage, right. that's a low self-esteem issue, call me, I'll hook you up, I'll get you together, I'll make it happen for you. It's like the blind leading the blind. <laughs> Marianne's got one broken engagement in a man of two months. No kids, and <laughs> here she well, is. I'm trying. Meddling. I'm trying, hey. <laughs> oh, please. Hopefully it'll come back to me, right, Wendy? You know what? Exactly, Marianne. <laughs> that's all we can hope for. And you, you know what? You're a beautiful woman. You have beautiful intentions, and you're a very attractive woman. Thank you. Isn't she an attractive girl? Look, who does she remind me of? The girl, the, the black girl from The Young and the Restless. You, th Her last name is Williams, I think. You remind me of that girl. Okay. From The Young and the Restless. Thank you. I gotta look her up. Thank you. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I'm still trying to picture who that is, but I'm sure I'm she's trying to think, night. too, and I can't think. <laughs> Damn. But hopefully after all this, I will get me somebody like a man because I've been You have a boyfriend of two I months, do, Marianne. But I need a real man. I'm okay. a 24-7 woman, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Marianne, I got to go. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Let me watch your walk away. Go ahead. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Just open the door so she doesn't have to touch the door. Therefore, she can just walk and I can just watch. There she goes. I guess we go. <laughs> you know what? Her heart's in the right place. Her heart is in the right place. Um, you understand what she's trying to do. Her name is Marianne Reed. And with all sincerity, go to her website, marryyourbabydaddy.com. This book actually doesn't sound like a bad book. I'm going to read this. Three women who've got to get married to inherit three million. <laughs> My book right here for the weekend. Oh, this segment of the Wendy Williams Experience is brought to you by AARP. Shout out to all the old crows. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> if we're lucky, we'll all live to be members of AARP. All right. Um, oh, it's the weekend, and I wanted to remind you that you only have a few more of these weekends before Circle of Sis Sisters is upon us, October 1st and 2nd at the Jacob Javits Convention Center. It's featuring shopping and hair and beauty and fitness and, and um, fashion shows and seminars, things to help you enhance the inside. Maybe that's somebody with my young and restless. Um, if, because if you say her name, I know it. Remember, her hair used to be natural, long, no weave down her back, uh, just beautiful, and then she cut it, and um, she's brown skin, she doesn't need very much makeup, she's got kind of a chubby face, but she's not a chubby body, just, just, a, just a cute, natural girl, and she was on The Young and the Restless, damn, what was her name, damn, anyway, um, Circle of Sisters, so go to... Ticketmaster and pick up your tickets for Circle of Sisters. It's going to be spectacular. Uh, spectacular. What did I say? Spectacular. Oh, my mind is on the biopsy. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> Go to Ticketmaster.com and get your tickets for Circle of Sisters now. Thank you. Did you catch this flashback? Wendy Williams and Mr. Marcus. Were you actually Superhead's boyfriend? at one time or was that another lie that she told yes, she's crazy yeah she said that, that you were her boyfriend she denied uh, participating she said oh you know silly Marcus he was my boyfriend and I didn't even realize we were being taped you know, that was a porn movie that you all were making yeah Mr. Marcus's yeah. neighborhood I don't know and she played the role yeah. of honey yeah she did she's good at what she does mm -hmm. you know what I mean I don't think she likes actual sexual intercourse part. I think she the oral thing she's good at that she's pretty good at that She's really good at that. Hey. <laughs> that's, why, that's why they call her Superhead. Got him. This is it right here. <laughs> miss a day, miss a whole lot. Do you speak this boy? It's windy, man. <laughs> open the door for our guest. Open the door, open the door, open the door, ladies and gentlemen. Kanye West, the Louis Vuitton Dawn, coming in. How are you? It's it's very nice to see you. I am so surprised that you're still carrying Marikami, the Louis Vuitton. Why is that? I, nobody carries that anymore, even after you've been on the waiting list and stuff. But the fact of the matter is, is that if you get something and you've paid a lot of money for it, why are you going to stash it? Right? Yeah. I just got it recently, though. Did you? I just thought it was hot to have a, a wallet like that. No. None, none, like that. Yeah, none of that design is hot anymore. Like, it, it, it's disgusting. It came and it went so fast. I guess I don't know nothing about fashion. But you're busy. Yeah. So, look, Kanye West, the last time that Kanye was here, um, 
um, you were on the verge of greatness. Your CD had, it, it was either about to come out or it had just come out, but you, the numbers hadn't come in and you didn't know right. what the re- how the rest of the world was going to perceive you. Um, now, you you know, yeah. and you've got the money, and you still elected to come back to the show. It's mighty black of you, Mr. West. Yeah, you know, I, I, lo- I love intelligent people who give really... Um, Interviews that push the person, yeah. you know, not just those cliche questions and everything. Yeah. I, I just appreciate the challenge. They say that you've been going through uh, quite a week. Um, I have a lot to talk to you about, but you know, um, my thoughts are will scatter as we're talking. Um, you've been going through quite a week. First of all, can you address Shirley Bassey and the Diamonds Are Forever song? She's talking about she wants to sue you. When we went um, on the net, because I didn't realize she didn't write the song. Did you pay the songwriters for that song? Yeah, so it's too like older. Gentlemen out in London yeah. that my publishers handle. Yeah. This is the first time I'm hearing about this stuff. Is it? Yeah. If she wants to sue you. I actually, I can judge up the quote and everything. Wow. Oh, she's on it, Mr. West. And she feels as though she wants part. And the other part... Um, yeah, of we, want, we wanted her to take part. We wanted to put her in a video. Matter of fact, I was supposed to talk to her. I was supposed to present her with her, like, star for, like, the Walk of Fame out in London. Isn't this something? Sunday. <laughs> and we couldn't get in contact with her. And this is the first I'm hearing that she wanted to sue, so... The, the first she heard of the Diamonds song is when you did it for Live 8. And she's up in arms. She right. had no idea about the song, no idea about her voice being a part of it, no idea about you doing the song, no, no nothing. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I'll get you the quote before you leave here today. Also, what's going on with Pepsi? Um, did they drop you or they consider dropping you? No, where is you there? that from? All right. Well, that's another, this is another thing. This, this is why it's yeah. great coming into the show. Because yeah. then we can dispel rumor, innuendo, innuendo, and things like that. Okay. So, so everything is fine. People, um, sponsors and people haven't turned their back on you with the George Bush comments. Or are you feeling a little bit of that? Nah, nah, they, they haven't. I mean, it's a, it's a little scary because when I went into the telethon, I didn't, I didn't realize what I was going to say, you know. And I've been turning away, like I said in my comment, that I've been turning away from it and not really soaking in everything. And when I saw just just even the, the little bit of information that they were giving us and I was hearing different things and Puffy hit us with a page, like a mass email earlier that day, just talking about the situation down there. And, and it was actually Tim McGraw's performance it, that that it moved me like when he was singing a song and everything and you know how music can, can just speak to you yeah and I, I really started getting emotional when i went up there i just felt like it was more important than just reading what was on the teleprompter and i just said that but then what's crazy i was with the people from pepsi that night i had to go back to the studio and oh. work on another commercial with uh-huh, them uh-huh. And i was like so what do y'all think <laughs> and, like, and the guy's Whoa. like, well, I haven't, any, I haven't got any calls yet, so that's good. <laughs> you know? we, we'll call yeah. you if we do, you splabu. Yeah. Splabu is what Michael Jackson calls black people. What's a splabu? Michael's word for the N-word. Splabu, that's not... Splabu. That came out in court documents. <laughs> you know, that's what he enjoys uh, calling. You know, we've been making up our own words, too, so... It's yeah, that, really, that's yeah. true. That is very true. Yeah. So, how, how much are you worth now, Kanye? Approximately. Um, I would never say that on the radio. Gotcha. You know, and that's the end of that. Okay. Well, you know, <laughs> you were looking off in space for a moment. I thought there was more coming. Where are you calling home now? Because I mean, we know you're from Chicago. Where do you spend most of your time? In the airport. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I got a place. I got a place here, like a couple places here, and I got a place in L.A. Yeah. Yeah. But I love, like, I love New York. It's my favorite. You know how people, I hate when people do the cliche interview wherever they go. They're like, man, I love it here. I love it here. You're but right. I really do stay here. Like, I love New York. This is where I, I, I made myself. New York is one of those cities where all the connections. They say if you can't make it in New York, you can't make it anywhere. That's right. You. This is where you need to go to make it. Right. You know? A lot of people do ask that. People ask that all the time. Um, mm-hmm. I do advice hour here on the show, and they're like, you know, I want to be an actor, or I want to sing, or I want to, I want to, you know, do this or that. You know, what should I do? I'm, I'm, I'm writing you from Delaware. I'm writing you from, you know, Wisconsin, or I'm, or I'm writing you from Chicago, and all those places are great places, but there's only two coasts 
for certain for certain things in life that mm. you want to do. And then once you make it in those certain things, then you can go back and you know claim residence and wherever you want. But I would say uh, New York you and gotta LA, go to New York. right? And L.A. is hard though. And it is people hard. be really like, because New York, you can still get a regular job. You can like yeah. work at, uh, well, you know, isn't it's still you can still be somewhat decent right. before you really get on. L.A. It'd be like you either on or you dead. Broke. Yeah, yeah. So. You gotta have money in L.A. You gotta be able to. Uh, <sighs> And you have to be struggling as an actress or an actor, and you still have to look the part, which is amazing because you're making hardly any money as a waiter or a waitress, but you're still expected to look the part, be the part, know the people and whatnot. Yeah, I hate it. I hate that you came in late, but you'll stay for another break, of course. Yeah, I hate that I came in late, too. My road manager, uh, he just had a um, uh, a child, so he's not here. As Don C, he pulls, he's the glue that pulls everything together. Uh, so between my security and my publicist, they, they already don't get along. They be uh, discommunicating. On, I don't know if that's a real word or not. On a, uh, red, it's okay. Yeah, I just I just made up a new one, like like a yeah. slavu, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so that's that's really the reason. I'm like I'm 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 ready. Like I, I wouldn't want to disrespect your show because I, I got respect for what you do. So you know I really apologize for being late. It's okay. I just thought it was a part of the arrogance that is Kanye West. Yeah, that, that that's what I'm all about. <laughs> I love yeah. it. You know what? You know what? I love that you can say that. We're going to talk yeah. more about that. We're going to talk more with Kanye West yeah. um, in our next break together. And you all can feel free to fax or whatnot. I don't have the seven seconds delay here, so I can't take your telephone calls while I'm talking to him. But yeah. but um, I think I got you covered with the line of questioning and whatnot. And Mr. West is in the building, and so it's the Wendy Williams experience. And this, everybody, is where it all goes down. So keep it where you got it. All right. Thank you. Wendy, man. I hate the way they portray us in the media. If you see a black family, it says they're looting. If you see a white family, it says they're looking for food. George Bush doesn't care about black people. The Wendy will... <laughs> Oh, Kanye West is here. He's on his way back around from the pink room. Uh, shout out to Foxy Brown. Foxy, everybody who was faxed in regarding you losing your hearing has sided with what I was saying, that this is a publicity stunt. And I just have a moment because West is coming up the hall in a minute. But here's an example. First off, the ish about Foxy being deaf is bullish. It's a ploy to throw people off the fact that her album keeps getting pushed back and Def Jam is fed up dealing with her PR messes. Jay is privately regretting having ever signed Foxy in the first place. And she's been advised to lay low and stay out of trouble. I totally believe it. She's your uh, girl, Kanye. What I miss? You, your girl is 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 begging for attention, Foxy Brown. So now it's that she's losing her hearing and she's got to undergo surgery. Well, of course, little Kim has been all in the news regarding the trial and going to jail and whatnot. And um, and Foxy's looking for the the attention and also the sympathy vote. My opinion. Y you understand? But this is not about Foxy Brown. It's my, about you. Know, my fibers are kind of low, in one of my ears. And so are mine. Yeah, yeah I got bad hearing for real. So that could be possible. Yeah. All right. Can you stay off the web and stay on the buttons? Kanye said he can't hear so well. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it is? They say when you wear headphones all the time. Kanye West, um, some of your fans are here. Then we're going to get back into my line of questioning. Um, I want Mr. West to know that he's successful and talented and a musical genius. I love his music. So why always the boo-boo face, jealous, arrogant attitude when he's out in public? It doesn't make him what, look what, nice. But what's the, what, what am I jealous of? I don't know. You know what? Yeah. I think that you do people, have a... People a, just start like, adding on stuff like the old the Spike Lee joints. Remember the old movie where he's like, you big something, 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 something. something. They just start adding on stuff with it. No, but I yeah. think that originally um, when you when you first came out, your, your cockiness took people by storm. It wasn't something that we were used to seeing from somebody who hadn't made a mark yet. You understand? Right. Yeah. Then your CD made its mark. You know, you got the awards and the accolades. Hell, every award show, you know, you were up and down, up and down, up and down on the stage, you know, to the point where it's like, wow, okay, the winner is. And we know, don't tell us, Kanye. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and your swagger hasn't changed much, much at all. Um, do you find that it's difficult... Um, getting through business meetings, getting through relationships with people because of the perception of your cocky attitude? Um, well, nah. Because cause I sit down and talk to them and, and we open up and they see that 
I'm just a, a really cool person, and I, I was always a class clown. If you know a lot of a lot of comedians, or a lot of people will big themselves up, but right. artists aren't supposed to because you know it's just it's you're an artist. This is what you represent. Whatever you're supposed to talk about, you're supposed to do it. You can't right. talk about something that you've never done, even right. if you know about it. Right. They, they have all these parameters put up for us. My basic, like when I was coming in the game, people treated me like I, I would never make it. So I built up this. This um, wall. Yeah, it's like a wall I built up. Thank you very much. And when when uh, when I was finally successful, it was hard for me to break down the wall. And now I'm having to adjust. Gotcha. And I, I might be a little bit off time with it. And even now, like it's it's like if somebody like actually likes me, it's like different. Like wait a second, you you, you really like me? Exactly. You, you question like the person for liking yeah. you. It's like it's like um if a like um um. A fat girl lost a whole lot of weight, right? And then somebody's just jocking them and taking them places. It's like, and why blah, do you blah, love blah, me? You it's like, why am I in this car right now? You right. Know, that, you, that's how you 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 would you like. Oh man, that's a good analogy. I understand what yeah. you're saying. How's your mom doing? She's doing great. This yeah. is a person right here. Um, yeah. her 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 name is cut off, but they're saying, I think you're a great person. However, I'm a bigger fan of your mother's. You know, because uh, she's this person is critical of how children are raised and so on and so forth. Basically, they're saying that your mother did a good job. All right, let's get back to you, Mr. West. Yeah. Um, you ever tap taste Tracy Ellis Ross? Oh. I mean, you know, how's, well, how's that? Yeah. Nah, I never have actually. Mm, you never dated? Mm, I never, never dated. She stayed, she stayed right down the street from me too. I understand that. Well, yeah. I always, always, I'm, I'm always like the girlfriend type. Always had a girlfriend. Okay. And what's funny is my girlfriends will always question me about her though. Like, really? Yeah, because we just mad cool like that. And then like, you were on that uh, sat that skit show that she was on on MTV too. Yeah. I remember. I remember you were on that episode. So you have history with her, and now you guys live conveniently down the street. So who's your girlfriend now? Well, I'm not gonna say it on the air, but it's not a, it's not an entertainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, oh, nor is it a secret, apparently, because you know you admit that you have a girlfriend. Yeah. Do you walk the red carpet with her? Um. Well, I haven't had an opportunity to. Mm -hmm. yet. Y'all, no, I did. I did at the Grammys. Mm -hmm. But we're we're a little little bit late. No, she was late that day. Now, now I remember. Is Kanye all with us? <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love, I love your answers. <laughs> nah, they can think about it. My, my days, I got like a hundred things I do in a day. Yeah, I know. Now I'm trying to think back to the red carpets. And I do, hold on, hey, Kanye West comment coming up. I do so many award shows that, you know, they just, it starts to become a blur. Yes, yeah. I understand. And yeah. you, But your mom has been with you more times than not. Now, you and your girlfriend, do you all live together in one of your places? Nah, she's got her own place. What what does she do for a living? Like something where she's making nice money, where where um. Where she, she wouldn't be considered a gold digger or something. Uh, like that? Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, nice. Yeah, she. I mean, she makes enough. Does she work at MTV? Um. Does she work on the 29th floor at MTV? Oh. <laughs> Is she? <laughs> huh? Oh. All right. Yeah, what well, you know the thing is, out of respect for her, I'm not trying to put her in a situation where she gets all the flack that I get. You okay. know what I'm saying? If I can help it, the same thing I do for my mother. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. well, yeah. maybe maybe you shouldn't be in the camera all the time because people try to pinpoint you. They try to um, bring you down. They, they try to figure out. You know, even when I walk with her, like little kids be screaming, "I ain't saying she go, nigga." Uh huh. Like uh -huh. she be like, "Why well, I gotta be the gold digger, right?" It's just because that's Cause what she song ain't messing with. Out. No broke, broke, <laughs> broke. Wendy. Well, uh, let's talk about Can the you gay remarks. Next time you do that, like. Yeah, you, by the way, I love the the looking over the shoulder during the d yeah. during the video. I love that very. Creative. That was arrogant in itself. Like I ain't even got turned my ass face the camera. Yeah, no, you play <laughs> off the arrogance. You do. That's what I do. Listen, mm. listen. My my basic opinion of you mm. has always been that I like you. I never mm. had a problem with you. You know what I'm saying? Mm. The arrogance and the whole bit and and it's entertainment. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? it is enter it is entertaining. You yeah. give us grist for the mail. Let's talk about yeah. the gay remarks. I never one time. Let me just say, um, thought that you were a gay man. Right. Nor will you be getting any seriously how you doing buttons pressed while you're here. All right. Y'all do that? Y'all do that in the middle of people's show? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, you don't have any headphones on. We can be pressing all kind of uh, buttons. How you doing? Yeah. All right. However, it took a lot for you to come out and talk about homosexuality and sex sexuality and hip-hop. Well, it's not just hip-hop. It's more like black people as a whole, mm -hmm. like how we feel mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. uh, 
gay people or people mm. that act gay. It's just so for us and our community is so taboo. We we look we look down upon it so much that that we could label somebody that to try to bring their career down. All right. But the thing is, it's people out there that that's actually their lifestyle. Of course, I was going to ask you. Um, so. You realize that in this industry, you are surrounded by um, people who that's their lifestyle. Everybody from the person who perhaps might do your makeup yeah. to the rapper who you might collabo with on right. your next CD. Right. And and I, I realize that. And the reason why it's probably so many people in the closet is because of how black people do look at gay people. Like, it's one of those things. Like, I'm going to say, let me turn this off for a second. I'm going to say... Um, like for a white person, mm -hmm. the worst thing that could happen to them. Like, this is like gonna be real politically direct. Wor worst thing, I meant to say it like that. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Worst thing for a white man, but to be to wake up one day and be black. Now the worst thing for a black straight man would be wake up to wake up and be gay. Because there's there's a double stereotype or a double. Yeah, because um, that's how bad we discriminate against negative that. Negative that he'd have to battle and, through and, life. And and the thing that thing that people couldn't really take was like someone to come out as a as a rapper and be tolerant uh -huh. of gay people and and stand up and say, well, I can speak about it. No matter what you what you want to turn around and what, try to say about me. What you know did what the publicity machine say to you? Your your machine say to you after that comment. Yeah, <laughs> what can they say? It's like they was at a they was at a loss for words. It was scary. It was really scary for them because because of what I'm saying. Because when right. people try to label you gay, that can bring down your career. It's another one of those situations where you feel like people were like, "Yo, you good? You good? What what in you? What is in you that makes you want to take up for them? And what is it so about black people where we always want to label people as gay and always want to bring uh, gay people down if they are gay? Right. What what is it about us? Why is that? Like because in the urban community, it's a lack of male software. Let's talk about homophobia. Yeah, it's a lack of male. So we build build up this false sense of what being macho is. You see what I'm saying? Like, if it's no father there, we feel like, okay, well, a man shouldn't wear pink. A, right. a man are not supposed to hug. You know, in Italy, they kiss each other on both sides of the cheek. Mm -hmm. Like, that that says that you gay. That says that you mm -hmm. that. So they build this up. So uh, a black man, when they wake up, one of their main goals, uh, and this is another thing, we in America, so we treat it like less than a man to start off with. Right. So one of our main goals is, I'm not gay. That's right. one of the things we show from our clothing, right. our whole swagger, yep. everything. The the, yeah. the fact that um, so mm -hmm. many men beat women to beat women um, to uh, and have so many kids, like yeah. that's a sign yeah. of manhood to or, be splashing or, or, or seeds or they everywhere. Beat up, or they beat up gay people, right? Like my friend GLC, <laughs> like my friends are very, very, very homophobic. And like I said on All Eyes on Me, one of the, when I was a very homophobic person, I hung around that type of energy because I felt like it made me more of a man like yo we you know what I'm saying we thugged out whatever and, mm -hmm. and, I, and I could learn that element because <laughs> people because I was raised by my mother and people was up there like yo you acting like a fag I didn't like that right. and I was like what did I do to, to, to get this you know I'm just I'm just being myself who I am mm -hmm. and, and I know I'm that gay I know I don't like men, but y'all calling me a fag. What I'm doing? So I, I went to all my friends who came super thugged out so I could learn how to put on, you know, put on the the face right. of what black people felt a man was supposed to be. Outside of Kanye, yeah. there are six people in the room. Raise yeah. your hand honestly if you ever thought that Kanye was gay. Raise your hand if you took a second look. Oh, I'm the only one? Okay. Raise your hand if after taking a second look, you absolutely think that Kanye is hetero. But they didn't take a second look. No, I, I was the only one who took the second look. And, and you know, that is not that is not my issue. Um, all right. The Louis Vuitton Dawn is here. Kanye West. I love the song on your CD with Nas. Was there any conflict with uh, Jay-Z in uh, regards to uh, that song? Yeah. Um, the main thing was the 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 just the way I brought it I brought it it was very sensitive you know what I'm saying I'm like yo I want to really do this song right here and I know this is an artist I love just as much as I love uh, Nas right and, and I'm signed to Jay right so automatically I'm on Rockefeller and it's all this beat so it's you can't you can't be like oh nah nah it was just no second thought about it right but but it's part of making good music and just like with every thought I put out there um, 
It's about people just growing. And Nas is at a point where he could be like, yo, that takeover was crazy when y'all was like, lame or whatever. And Jay could be like, yo, man, that joint was crazy. We made just one of my favorite joints on the mm-hmm, album. Mm-hmm. And you see Jay reciting a Nas verse. Mm-hmm. And it, it's saying exactly what I'm trying to say for black people out here, black men out here. We major. We above all that. That hating, that killing. I know y'all love all that, but all that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I Listen, just made that up right there. I should go to the studio. Wait, and and, and you good. probably will. Yeah. Listen, um, this break is about to wrap up, but I want to talk with you more. I want to talk with you about how you put together this tour that you're about to embark on. Um, I want to talk with you about an event that happened in your life that I got wind of uh, mm-hmm. recently. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, find out from you your thoughts on that. Uh, I wanted to talk um, a bit more about your love life and... Um, and some other things. So it's Kanye West uh, with Wendy Williams. Keep it where you got it, all right? It's Wendy, man. You never met me. You don't know me. You ain't been in my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me, but talk about me. Watch what you say. That's all, baby. That's all I'm asking you is watch what the fuck you say. The Wendy Williams Experience. Oh, it's the Wendy Williams Experience, everybody. And, um... Due to a few limitations that I uh, work with regarding this um, radio program, um, the rest of uh, Kanye West will be Monday during the radio show. Um, I had to record behind the scenes. And um, I mean, you know, there are there are time constraints, which, you know, I have to take into account servicing several markets at one time. You know, it's a part of what I knew I was going into when I decided to be syndicated. You know, that, you know, well, there's radio stations that still insist on playing 20 damn hits in a row. Play on the hits. You know what I mean? So, um, because of that, uh, the rest of Kanye, though, and I I secured it. Goose, don't erase that. Art, you take that piece of equipment home over the weekend. Yes. Because that's what we got to deal with. So when he presses the race button and all like that. So um, shout out to Jay in Wilmington, Delaware. Hey, Jay, what's going on? Well, the weekend. So where are we? I don't know. I spent so much time talking to Kanye behind the scenes. I'm totally off kilter with the rest of the damn show. Damn. Is it the five of the you my throat hurts. Oh, ow, no. ow, 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 oh, ow. Pass me the paper. Shakira. <laughs> Ooh. Um... Dear Wendy, I just checked out T-Boss store online called Chase'sCloset.com. Nice clothes, but all the models and kids and men and women were all white except Chase. Well, Faith, um, maybe um, T-Boss is trying to distance herself. I don't know. Did you guys hear anything about a new artist that... Oh, come on. You can bring Shelly Garrett in. Um, does Jay-Z have a new artist named Kay Ruger, who they say passed away earlier this week? I've never heard of the person, and I don't know anything about this. Um, Shelly Garrett is here, but there's somebody else taking the chair. <laughs> Shelly, that's you? Okay, I'm sorry, ma'am. Can he can he take that chair? Because we only have a limited break, and i got to get to the man. I can't luxuriate over conversation, which is part of the problem why I couldn't continue with my Kanye West interview. Oh, Hi, Shelly. How you doing? It's very nice to see you. Good to see okay, you so again. you're the man who originally brought us many of the, um, the stage plays that have now become a part of the fabric of black society and black culture. The, the original play of this genre was the beauty shop. Beauty shop. <laughs> there you go. Beauty shop. And so since you and beauty shop, there have been several other uh, play producers to come right, along, including right. Tyler Perry. Right. And, and he's um, doing a good job. Yes, I'm glad yeah, that you say is. that. Oh, and is, yeah. and, um, and many of the other ones, mm-hmm. um, I, whose names I can't think of off the top of my head. But what are you doing? You're touring the country with a play. No, we're, we're ending beauty shop. Oh wow! Beauty Shop started um, started touring in nineteen uh, ninety uh, Septem- September twenty sixth, nineteen eighty nine. Okay, started touring. It started in eighty seven. Wow, and ran in L A for two years. Okay, but and uh, we're going to end it here at the uh, in New York. Uh, no, at the uh, in uh, Newark in Newark Symphony, Symphony Hall, Hall, September twenty fourth tomorrow. Wow! Oh, very nice. Yeah, yes. So, started in September, ending in September. So now, um, and you've gone from city to city to city. Yeah. Um. Does it cost a lot to put together a play like that? 
Uh, well, you know, it really depends on the city. It costs an awful lot in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any, any, anything where Wendy's voice comes through, it's going to cost a bunch of money. Because <laughs> <laughs> Wendy is money. So so now, now, are you putting another play out? Yeah, I have one coming out the first of the year. And it's going to be touring the country. Right. Are there any celebrities in this play coming yeah, out? Yeah, it's first? called Ain't No Love Like Your Mother's Love. Okay. <laughs> okay. And and who's going to be in it? Ike Turner. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, 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 yeah. Got Bernadette Stannis. Oh. Lenny Williams. This, Derek Monk. The you singer. know, that's the Apollo winner. Oh, yeah. Hey, Derek. <laughs> and he's in this one, too. Okay. You know. <laughs> okay. And so, so um, this play, can people go onto a Shelly Garrett website or something no, like they that? Go to, to they go to Ticketmaster. No, no, no. I'm talking about because, you know, this is a syndicated show. They're, this is oh, more than just oh. New York listening. No, and not, so people not to are the going first to, of the year. All right. At the, the first of the year. The first of the year, they can do that. And they can go to what? Shelly Ca- Garrett? ShellyGarrett.com? ShellyGarrettProductions.com. Okay, ShellyGarrettProductions.com. Yes. You'll be touring through mm-hmm. L.A. Right. Chicago. Chicago, Detroit. No, I like Philly, that. Yeah, Very DC, nice. Very here. nice. You were married at one point to Melissa Morgan. Oh. <sighs> well, do me, baby. Oh, you know, Lord. she... She is... <laughs> She is a singer. She told me that uh, when you first met her, you wind and dined her and set up a couch in the front row, sent the yeah. limo to her house, roses all over the floor of the limo, champagne every place, and a couch for her and her girlfriends to sit and watch the beauty shop. Well, I sold the couch. I killed the roses. <laughs> oh! <laughs> when you got me a lady. <laughs> oh, that's your woman. Now. Okay, hi. Yeah. How are you? All and right. this is Doris Gatson. All right. Nice yeah, to see you, Doris. Atlanta, and uh, we're going to do this thing. You know, But she's on the show. She's the one this one wants to know who in the beauty shop's fooling around with her husband. Okay, let me ask you about the beauty shop, the play. Do you get money from beauty shop, the show, and beauty shop, the movie, and the big screen, or is this just a common title? And I'm thinking that you got a piece of it. No, I didn't. I, I don't really don't have anything to do with be- the Queen Latifah beauty shop uh-uh. the movie, but I, you know, I mean, I, I got a little something, something for the title. You know, uh-huh. you know, you just can't run around. You know, beauty shop is a trademark. Okay, that's something, something. Is that enough to go out and buy a Mini Cooper? One of those cars with cash? I'm trying to d- depict the cash thing. When why are you doing this to me? Uh, okay. Everybody in the world listens to you. <laughs> and I, IRS is listening to you. I, 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 oh, okay. Oh, on, oh, okay, okay, on, okay. You, you oh, I got you. you know. Did Ike Turner want to be paid in cash when he starts on this show? Um, no, no. I, 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 Ike is cool. He got his thing together. Yeah, yeah he, he's cool. He's never done a play before. Mm-hmm. You know, as, as many many of the people haven't done plays before. Right, right, right. But, uh, but uh, that's going to be fun. He's playing a judge. Plays a he, mi- He's playing a judge. How dare him. Uh, 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 <laughs> judging a uh, domestic violence How case. How dare him? How <laughs> dare him? You know, you know. <laughs> Rolling down the river. Shelly, you're quite dramatic yourself. Oh, I, I have fun. Are you a multimillionaire? Damn. There you go. Damn. Oh, I heard you asking Kanye about money. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Trust me, I know. I know. Look, Shelly, it's been it's nice to see you. It's good to and, see you. And um, everybody in in the New York, New Jersey, Jersey tri-state area, don't forget tomorrow night is Beauty Shop at the Newark Symphony Hall. It's the closing. Two shows. Two shows. Three and eight o'clock. Symphony okay. Hall. And then all around the country, don't forget Shelly will be touring beginning in January with Ike Turner and his band of merry men in the new play. Ain't no love like your mother's love. <laughs> Go on the website ShellyGarrettProductions.com and go. find out when that show will be in your city. Mm-hmm. Do I have that right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir. But we worried about Beauty Shop now. Thank, yeah. We, we're going to close that with a bang. Oh, okay. And we're about we're to close, close out this show with a bang, with a bang too. <laughs> you all, I love you for listening. Kanye West, thank you so much for coming into the show today. And um, we'll do part two of Kanye West on Monday, everybody. Um, Please just work. And look, it is what it is. Work with me, people. Work with me. <laughs> Have a wonderful weekend and take care of one another. Bye bye. Peace party, people. <laughs> See you later. Cause I'm saying bye bye. Good night. Program complete. All right. How you doing? All right, you all keep it where you have it because um. Oh, hell, the bonus hour is... Excuse me, Goose, why is everything so loud? (laughs) The cops come in like bacon on Sunday morning. Yo, Goose, she's sick and easy. She's not doing well. (laughs) 
And stop making me strain my voice. I told you that uh, they. uh, Bone marrow, yeah, we gotta be careful. Exactly. Trying to kill him. Yeah, that was it. To get my shift. (laughs) We need jobs, right? (laughs) Look, you all, um, keep it where you got it, okay? Because the bonus hour is coming up next. And uh, you know what? I invite you to use the phone lines now. 866-GET-WENDY. Call me. We can talk about whatever. It's 107.5 WBLS. Hi, this is Vaughn Harper. Relax with me weeknights at our new time, 7 p.m. to midnight on The Quiet Storm, as I promise to give you a musical massage right here on 107.5 WBLS. Today. 107.5 107.5 WBLS New York. Let's take some calls from the request line. Call the number one. Earlier today, she talked to radio host Wendy Williams. Dateline's Hoda Kotb talked with New York radio DJ Wendy Williams. Earlier this year, on Wendy Williams New York radio show. Wendy Williams is a national syndicated radio personality. Jenny guest tonight. Why is Wendy Williams fast becoming the queen of all media? She made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. Oh my lord, have I really this? That was the most erratic, weird interview I'd ever heard. I'd ever heard. The Wendy Williams Experience. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on this bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's windy, man. Here it is. Yeah. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS New York. Mm-hmm. Ain't it funky now? What's it going to rain? No. When does daylight savings time kick in? Uh, today. Oh, yesterday. No, no, no yesterday was the first day of fall. So daylight we'll savings time is uh, like in October. Yeah, like on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What's the date? 20 All right, so I was telling you guys about uh, Jay- Jay-Z's newest artist. I don't know um, any, they don't know any of the details surrounding the death, but apparently... I've never heard of this person, so therefore I'm not even going to talk about it. Kay Ruger. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about uh, the loss, if if that's the case. And shout out to his family. I mean, I don't know you, but you know. Um, Kay Ruger has got a publicist though who expressed excitement about his forthcoming album, and he was, they say, looking forward to working with Jay Z more, and it was a breath of fresh air for hip hop. The publicist says. And he rapped about how great um, a lot of the rappers were, like in like Tupac and Biggie, and a lot of the DJs, like DJ Screw and whatnot. <clears throat> Kanye never heard about uh, Shirley Bassey wanting to sue. He said that when he came in here, that was the first time. But he put that where back there because Kanye said that his people got in touch with the writers of that song, Diamonds Are Forever, who live in England, and they were paid the appropriate amount of money for him to use that. So Shirley Bassey is just upset. Kanye also said during his interview, the part that, you know, we aired so far because, you know, we have a whole nother segment of that interview to air on Monday. But um Kanye said that he tried to get in contact with her for her to be in the video. And he got no phone calls back or whatever. In the meantime, remember, Shirley Bassey is saying, I didn't know anything about the song before its release. He didn't ask my permission to have me singing on his song. I didn't even know it existed until I heard him perform it at the Live 8 concert. I didn't even hear from his record company, which wasn't very nice. Legally, it's something I want to look into because he was very cheeky. So one way or another, he'll have to pay me a lot of money. Well. Hello? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hi. How are you? Pretty good. Good. There's something I've been meaning to ask you. Do you think little Kim can join the Nation of Islam now that she's in prison? <laughs> I mean, I think it would help her, you know, like the contact lenses and the fornicating. And I well, think it would help. 
I don't know that. You know, of all the things little Kim has been to us, I've never seen her for whatever reason as a slut. She's kept her sexual life pretty quiet. I mean, if you think about it, you you don't hear about Kim sleeping around as much as you hear about a lot of other people. She might write rap about some nasty stuff, but that is only assumptions based on her lyrics. I mean, even me as a gossip, I can't name you more than five people, and I don't even think I can name five that I've heard of Little Kim having sexual relationships with. Oh no, it's not just about the sex. I'm saying like the contacts and all the rest of that. And you think that would help? Well, I think that's to each his own. I mean, if, if that's what she wants to do. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, one last thing. Mm hmm. Can you please get a copy of Miss Honey? Oh, yes, I do need a copy of that song. Goose, can you please work on that? Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. God bless you. Yeah. Goose, can you really get a copy of that song? Great. Terrific. We got it then. Goose is on the case. Hello. How are you doing, Miss Wendy? Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I, I love you. I love you. Thank you. Listen, listen. First of all, let me give a round of applause to Kevin because he's he holding it down. Something lovely for you. <laughs> listen, second of all, I got major, major information in reference to individuals improving their health. And tell Artie, don't be playing no crazy sound behind it either. Okay. What it is is raising glutathione. It's important. It's major. Um, they can go to a website that can give them a lot more information about it. And that's just what improve people's health? Yes. Raising glutathione. And it helps, it helps with individuals with diabetes, lupus. Uh, even you for self with your thyroid, especially you personally, you need to be taking pure milk calcium. Uh, which no, well, well, no, I had my bone density test today, and my bones are good. My bones are excellent. Okay, good. But what about high blood pressure? What I about colon I cancer? I don't have high blood pressure. I've never had a colonoscopy, but my grandmother passed of colon, colon cancer. Uh -huh. So I will be having my first colonoscopy um, at 50. But because I'm a paranoid about my health, I'll probably start that at 45. Oh, okay. Yeah. So in the meantime, you need to be concerned about bone health. No, my bones are good. I just had a full bone density test yeah. earlier today before the show. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Up at well, my endocrinologist. Yeah. I have about, I mean, there's over and he 50. Got, and he's able to get the results right away because, oh, yeah, it be, yeah his, his, his office is laid out like that where you get results right away. As a matter of fact, I should have called him earlier today at four o'clock to get the results of my blood work because his, his, I go to a doctor for my um, endocrinologist. He has uh, everything there in his office. But listen. I got to get to the next caller. Okay, listen, let me give you this website I want you to check out. Okay. It's called it's at www.realmilkcalcium.com. Okay. That's realmilkcalcium.com. Okay. All right? Thank you. You take care, love. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, he knows that I'm a bit of a hypochondriac. Hello? Hello, Wendy? Hi, how are you? Hi, this is who you call Snobby Marianne. Hi, Snobby Marianne. <laughs> how you doing? Fine, thanks. I was calling about Kanye West's interview. Mm, it, which hasn't fi even finished because we've got like another whole segment to play for you on Monday. I'm very glad. Good. Yeah, but he seems uh, like a very intelligent person, more than cocky. Or, I, you I, know. En I enjoy talking to Kanye. Yes, it seems like he's been uh, victimized by the same thing, how they say a woman's a bitch if she's very forceful. Right. Um, so or a gold digger if she's dating him. a wealthy man. Oh, yes, he is. Yes. Yes, he is. I had met him a while ago when they had uh, his release party mm -hmm. at Hammerstein Ballroom. Mm -hmm. And he seemed very nice. Yes. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Down to earth. Yes. But also, I wanted to tell you the person whose name you were trying to think of on The Young and the Restless. Not Victoria Rao, the one who played her uh, sister. Tony Williams. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Tony Williams. But it was Victoria Rao that had cut her hair. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. It's Tanya Williams. Tanya Williams, who's yes. going on in Broadway and what have you. Yes. Yeah. Th thank you, Marianne. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend. All right. We'll take another one. Hello? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. It's Jamie. How are you? Hi, Jamie. I just wanted to tell you how much I love your show. Thank it's you. hilarious. Thank you. And I just wanted to also say, what did I want to tell you about? Oh, you were talking the other night about bronzers. Mm-hmm. The bronzer is called Hula by Benefit is the best bronzer. Yeah, but you sound like a white woman, so therefore, <laughs> maybe, perhaps your bronzer might not work on darker br That's black hilarious. black skin. Like, it might work on Mariah Carey's skin. There you go. But it might not work on my skin. I'm a Max C7. There you go. You know, so I, you know, I need something a little bit darker. But, um, you know, thank you for listening, Jamie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 
Shout out to Tony. Tony's still listening. Said, I, Wendy, I heard you say something about Goose being Trini. If so, is he is he the one who did radio in Trini? Also, is his name Ian? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> well, yes, Tony. As a matter of fact, it's one and the same. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Goose. Has joined the Wendy Williams experience. Yeah. They closed down W I L W L I B, and uh, Goose was without a home. And we said, "Bring him over here." Yes. yes. And here he is. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Goose. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh yeah. Wow. Goose keeps us laced with the illest music. I do have to say, Goose, you can get that Miss Honey song, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Actually, I went looking for it, you know, but that uh, the record store down on 34th is no, it's no more. Man. Yeah, they closed it yeah. down. Don't you? You don't have it in your yeah. massive collection of music? Yeah, I gotta go dig. I gotta go dig. Mm. Yeah. But we can get it. Who's the artist? I can just go online wire and just bring it up. Well, if you could do that, Mr. Producer, you would have done did it. Uh, what's the name How long you? have I been singing the Miss Honey song? Who's what about iTunes? Forever. Who's about? What about iTunes and, and Bill? Yeah, who's about? I do a search for um, who's Miss Honey. I can't, I, I can't remember. Forget it. Don't, don't answer. What, what's it called? Don't worry about it. Goose is going to do it. Oh, he's got to dig. <laughs> <laughs> and you love to dig, so. <laughs> Tonight, I am so going home to watch uh, Dateline. It's the story about um, the white couple who had twins. And one t came out black and one came out white. And so I was asking earlier, well, how could that have happened? Art was asking. And here's um, Danya, who let us, who's letting us know. Wendy, their brief story is Willem and Wilma, a white Dutch couple, were trying to have a baby through IVF. They managed to get impregnated, but only after the twins were born did they discover that there was a problem. One boy, 2N, was white, and the other, were, the other boy, Cohen, is black. Truly by accident, these twins, twin brothers were half-brothers growing in the same womb, but the sperm came from two different fathers. Oh, can you sue for something like that? <laughs> Big ol' splabu. <laughs> Good morning, mommy. Uh oh. <laughs> two child support checks. <laughs> Hello, daddy. <laughs> I'm watching it tonight. Wow. Okay. <sighs> Wendy, oh my lord. Why in the world did you say how you doing over the radio to me after you said what's up to me? Now my coworkers are looking at me with the crooked eye, and Lord, Ow. my fiance just called here with all Ow. this damn questioning. How you doing? Love Harlem Hottie. Well, Harlem Hottie, tell them then. Tell them. I'm gay. I'm a homo. I'm I like gay. girls. <laughs> <laughs> tell them what you shared with me, the last Dons and Divas, after you had all that brown juice. Tell oh. them what you told me. Oh. I'm just playing. <laughs> Shout out to the Harlem hottie. I don't know you, girl, but I like that you ride with us every day. And you don't, um, you don't sugarcoat any of your messages to me. And I love you for that. So um, while I don't know you, I don't need to know you. You know, you're part of this listening family. As a matter of fact, you're part of the foundation of this listening family, Harlem hottie. And I didn't say how you doing to you like that, did I? Didn't I just say how you doing? How you doing? See, anytime I say it, though, I think it becomes a, a, a thing. Yeah. yeah. Wendy, oh Wendy, headhunter had had to put his foot down. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Nothing like a strong black man flexing his muscles, showing him who's boss. Mm. It must have been good loving when you got home. Huh. That's from for now. Wendy, I would like to hear more about the situation with you and your husband and what happened last night on the red carpet. You always go into depth about everyone else's situation. We want to hear about yours. You probably won't read this on the air, but we want to know. P.S. I got everyone listening here at work, and we're loving it. That's from Annika. Annika, details as I can reveal. But it was what it was. It, it, it actually, you know, shout out to, um, what is this? Shout out to um, schoolofhardknocks.com. Um, you got it partially correct. 
Yeah, my red carpet coverage was cut short last night. Little thing jumped off and me out. Oh, please, you all. You know I'll talk. I just, um... Nellie's got a reality show. Why not? Everybody else has one. I'll do it for you this just-in fashion. Okay. Rap star Nellie <laughs> has inked a deal. To, when I talk like this, do I have a double chin? Uh, no. No. Okay. No. Do I need a Botox? Look, I'm wrinkling my forehead. Mm, maybe a shot right there. Dr. Janine called me up the other day. She said, Wendy, I'm looking at your chart. It's time for another. Mm. So I made my appointment. Shout out to Dr. Janine Downey in Montclair, New Jersey. Wicked with the needle. Yes. Rap star Nelly oh. has inked a deal to develop a reality television series with A. Smith and Company Productions. It was announced yesterday. The show will chronicle the day-to-day -day life of the rapper Nelly. I look forward to showing my fans what my world is about and bringing more attention to my nonprofit orga organization. Nelly runs his nonprofit organization, you know, for show for kids, and um, you know he's dedicated to um, the bone marrow registration in honor of his late sister Jackie Donahue, who passed away in March of leukemia. And um, the program is expected to air on TV sometime early next year. No further details are available. Very nice, Cornel. Cornell. That's rap. That's um his name, Cornell. I got a birthday party to attend every single Saturday in October. My kid, Mr. Popularity. You know how the kids are, though. You know what I mean. This is like at that age five where they all want birthday parties and you know everybody's birthday parties have a theme and that whole bit and then they get jealous because you know you go to the toys r us and you're getting a gift for you know the, the little boy or the little girl and they want something also and they don't quite understand no i don't do that okay one fell swoop on my drive home um earlier this week i went to toys r us and i got something for everybody grabbed a few things from the bls library too <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. clean versions of Kanye West late registration. Why not? Yes. Okay. Is that too much for to give a five-year-old? No. Not in my house. It's not. No. I mean, they're white kids. Oh yeah. Oh. But Kanye's uh. He's, he's mainstream. He's crossover. Is he still crossover after he said George Bush don't like black people? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, I'll fall back off that. <laughs> I'll let that breathe for a minute. No, but you know what we had? We had a couple of those cute compilation CDs, you know, um, where, where um, you know, the kids' choirs are singing popular songs. You know, hit me, baby, one more time. Okay. You know, not Britney singing, but, you know, like the kids' choir. We get all that kind of cool stuff in the library. Don't know adults want that crap. You know what I mean? So I go in there shopping for birthday parties. We get them all the time. That Hurricane Rita boy. You see the traffic down south in Texas? Traffic is blocked up for hundreds of miles at this point. People are running out of gas there on the turnpike, or excuse me, on the road. And they're saying that that's an instant death trap. You know, particularly if you run out of gas and you're like on a um, on a bridge, the winds are 165, and, and damn near 200, 200 miles per hour. But it's down from a Category 5 to a Category 4. Mm -mm -mm. Wendy, I love the show. I listen in my office. I know when my coworkers hear this, they will recognize my story. However, it needs to be told. Uh -oh. Being a mother of a little boy, I have to ask you if you have a lock on your bedroom door. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was in the middle of a terrible divorce. My ex and I share custody of our seven-year-old boy. Wendy, since we split more than three years ago, I have not had a relationship, mainly because I know what my ex would use. Excuse me. I know that my ex would use it against me in court. Since resolving things in court, I have started dating. To make a long story short, oh, hold on. 
I think this is a soiree invitation. It's a nice oh. big gold envelope. Yeah. Oh, T.I. Right now. Oh, it's his birthday party. Get loose, the birthday celebration for T.I. Oh, no, 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 no. Wendy no. speaks of husband at VH1 Hip Hop Honors. Huh? <laughs> what? Wendy speaks of husband at VH1 Hip Hop Honors. You are such a terrible, terrible orator. I cannot understand what you say. You understood, right, Goose? No, he didn't, and neither no, did Shakira, and we're all <laughs> laughing at you. We're all laughing at you. <laughs> Can you say it slow? What? Wendy speaks on husband at VH1 Hip Hop Honors. Oh, that's what's going across somebody's website as they're listening to this radio show now? Oh, I got like four of them up on the message board. I'm not saying it. No, no, but they're all positive. They're saying good things. Oh. Yeah. Well, I I mean, but sometimes... Like he was protecting you. T.I., thank you. That's what a manager does. And a a manager who's a husband... Is even better. Is even better. That's what it says. You know what I'm saying? Because I, as the talent, can't have my eyes on everything. And oftentimes, I, as the talent... Although I have the ability to black out, it is not in my best interest, not when I have somebody else who can black out for the entire situation. That's all. I'm not really at liberty to speak anymore about that, not because I'm being shut down by anybody, but, you know, in time. Look, we're together, what, five days a week, five hours a day. I'm in solid standing here at WBLS. Me and you were good for another few years here. So, you know. <laughs> Shout out to Steve Lindsay, though, who was definitely left on the red carpet holding the lipstick. Like, what happened? Shaking. <laughs> <laughs> Shaking, like, oh my God. <laughs> Calling me up 25 times on my way home. I wasn't answering the phone because I'm busy talking. Finally, I pick up the phone. Lindsay. Ooh. <laughs> Is everything okay? Like Steve. Just please hunt for that hair that I need. We'll talk tomorrow. Steve talks like Charles Nelson Riley. My hair and makeup person. Do you know who that is? Yeah, the guy with the glasses, the big... Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. From Match Game and whatnot from back in the day. Since we split, I've had, uh, I haven't had a relationship, but since things are resolved in court, I started dating. To make a long story short, I invited my, you didn't think I'd remember where to pick up, did you? But I did. We're talking about the woman with the seven-year-old son and the lock on the bedroom door. To make a long story short, I invited my new boyfriend to my house. One thing led to another, and while we were having sex, my son walked in on us. Oh, no! (laughs) Get off my mommy! Get off my mommy! (laughs) He says... No, that's not what he said. Wendy, needless to say, I'm beside myself with guilt. You know he's smart enough to ask questions like what we were doing. And from his father's questions, I know he told his father. I tried explaining to my son about relationships, but now he has a resentment to my new boyfriend and gets upset every time he comes to visit me. I mean, the kid cries when he sees me embrace or kiss. As a mother, what would you do? Please don't make light of this. I really need your advice from Tamara. You know, Tamara, I know what you mean. My son is at the age where uh, he has a fit when I hug and kiss my husband. And will run up to make it a family joint thing or whatever. And I mean, he goes crazy with it. But that's the age that he is. He's five. At seven, will he be doing the same thing? I don't know. Probably. Is that why we have a lock on the door? Absolutely. Absolutely. You ask me, what would I do? I wouldn't have been doing it with the door unlocked. And at the very least, if I was dating... I don't even think I'd be doing it in the house. I'll be honest with you. Just because of that. I, there's no telling when this boy is going to give up the resentment for the boyfriend. But based on my son's um, wilding out over his dad, I would say never. Yeah. I mean, because at least, at least with you know my situation, you know what I'm saying? His dad is here, there all the time, every day to reinforce. You know, this, if anything, you need to be happy, boy. You know that, that you know there's family time, and you know, mommy, I love both of you. I, or whatever. But 
I don't know. I don't know that he'll ever get over it. Um, and I don't know. I don't. I. I don't. You know what? You'd be better off talking to a, a child psychologist regarding this. Like somebody who really knows the psychology of children or picking up a few books in the library. I have this book that I um, I keep on my nightstand. I can't even remember it, but it re it's regarding, um, you know, the little flare-ups and things you might see change in your child's behavior and things you might have to nurture them on regarding when they get it from like kindergarten through first grade, you know. And I refer to this book constantly. And I can't even, it's green, it's, oh, I forgot the name of it. Anyway. You probably need to talk to a professional to see how you deal with it. Or take the kid over a friend's house or a babysitter's while you do your thing. Well, no, 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 no. I understand. And believe me, she's she has not made this this mistake since then. I know that. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I don't know for a fact, but I bet you she hasn't. So that's already too late. The incident has already left a stain in his brain that will remain in the back of his mind until the boyfriend comes over again. <laughs> oh, don't you remember that song? Kumo D, damn you! Yes. How you like me now? Yeah. I stay in your brain. The will be yeah. in the back of my mind until I see you again. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not for him. It's just you know, I was just the weekend talking. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know what to tell you, Tamara. Might be a wrap with that particular boyfriend in terms of your son ever accepting him at this particular time. But you'll know better. You get a lock on your bedroom door. Or how about you don't have sex in your house? There you go. Then your son is uh, off dating and he's out. Oh, that's a call you're supposed to be taking. Oh, Capone's on the phone? Yeah, yeah. that's a Capone? Yeah. Put him up alive. He's going to talk about yeah. the event he's doing tonight. Capone, Pone's on the phone. Pone phone. The gangster comedy. Yeah, very funny. How you doing? What's up, girl? <laughs> hey, Paul. <laughs> so, so Paul's doing a big event tonight. Do tell. Do tell. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about this Wednesday, though. We can ready take this off the hook with the Laugh Factory. Oh, yeah, everybody. You know, Capone is um, the, the Wednesday night host at the Laugh Factory. Very, very funny man. But we we uh, we got that established already. I want to know what you're doing for the weekend. All right. I didn't want to tell it, but it's about to be the biggest show of the year, the top dogs of comedy. Okay. We doing eight shows at Stand Up New York over the weekend. Yes. Well, now how are you going to fit in eight shows? The weekend's only Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We doing three shows tonight. Oh, hustle, hustle. Three shows tomorrow. Talk about it. One show on Sunday. Crap. And Thursday night, last night was so much off the hook uh -huh. that everybody is coming back tonight again. Wow. So it's going to be crazy. So this is big. So this place is called Top Dog? This is the Top Dogs of Comedy. Oh, Top Dogs of Comedy. Okay. Me, Rob Stapleton. Funny. My man Will mm -hmm. and Tony Roberts from L.A. Yeah. Killing it. So where is this happening? This is at um, Stand Up New York on 78th Street and Broadway. There you go. Ridiculous. These men are very, very funny. I got to tell you, gut busting, funny as all hell. At Stand so Up I New had York. to call you personally and tell you... If you ain't going out of town, I want to see you there because this is going to be the biggest show of the year. Now, you know what? I'll probably maybe stop by, um, you know, tomorrow night because I'm, I'm going out. T.I.'s having a party. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, I'll stop through and, and check you out because you're always funny. I mean, what a spirit lifter you are. By the way, um, ha what are your comedy friends saying about the Chris Rock show premiered last night? Um, we ain't paying no attention to that. <laughs> hating. <laughs> Yeah. No, not not no. much hating, but right now, I mean, Chris Rock got his. Yes. And we, we were trying to get ours. Yeah. You know, so more power to him. We wish him the best. Yeah. But it's about us this, this weekend. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. The Top Dogs of Comedy at Stand Up New York. Hey, Wendy, I'll holler at you later, baby. All right, Thank Paul. You. Take go care. To work. Bye, bye bye. All right. Bye. Yo, he keeps the hustle going on. I mean, he's always doing something. He owns a salon up in the Bronx and... Drives around and his big body bends and that's what he has. Yeah. Okay. Silver. Oh, comedy's good. Yeah, oh, comedy's very good. Uh oh. I'm not Capone. Kelly Rollins is working on her second CD, and it's going to. Be <laughs> it's here. 
it's going <laughs> yes Gina. it's going to um feature here we go which is the first single from trina's glamorous life cd what wait kelly rollins is working on a second cd and is also featured on oh on here we go Oh, that's Trina's song from the Glamorous Life CD. Trina's album will be out in um in October on the 4th, as a matter of fact. In February, Kelly's going to p- appear in three episodes of Girlfriends on UPM to coincide around the Michelle Williams appearance on Half and Half. <laughs> Oh, boy. I don't want you to go to sleep before you get home. <laughs> let's let's give an exciting story. Yes. No, don't say that. I, I'm, I'm interested to hear Kelly Rowland's um, new CD. And I like the show Half and Half, and I'm interested to see what they're going to do with Michelle on Half and Half. Hmm. <laughs> Pass me a pillow, Shakira. And I wonder what, Kelly, what role Kelly's going to play on Girlfriends. I'm interested in that. Are you really though? I'm into more. Well, I'm more interested in Sybil as Sybil Shepherd as Martha Stewart this weekend. I'm more interested in that than the season premiere of Desperate Housewives, only because I can't watch both things and I don't know how to work the picture in picture. And quite frankly, I don't like all of that stimulation going on at one time. You know that picture in picture thing? Like we have it. I never use that. I don't want to know how to use it. I don't want all that interference. When I watch, I want to focus. Plus, you can hear them both. You got to hear them both. You know, so. Well. Uh, the, this is the way I rationalize why I'm going to be at CBS on Sunday at 9 o'clock for Sybil. Sh- oh, my gosh. Are we well past the break time? Oh, well, crap. It's, ooh. It is 634. That's okay. And 51 seconds. No, we need to take the first break. All right. Goose got it in charge. No, he's not. Goose, as you can see, is zoning out like the rest of us. <laughs> wow. You're safe. You're safe. You're safe. Still a giveaway. Zone, Goose is still... <laughs> Uh, Goose is still marveling at the fact that somebody recognized him being the legendary Goose from Trini Radio, the legendary Goose, the DJ, and uh, correlated it all with the legendary Goose from WLIB. Yes, everybody, Goose is now Wendy Williams experienced. Look, and he turns up his own claps. Look, Art turned him on, and Goose potted it up. <laughs> All hail Goose. <laughs> oh. All right. Um, I got some play tickets to give away on the other side of the break. I wanted to give you information. Is anybody still in the promotions department? I can go check. Because um, I need I'll- this. No, 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 no. Please, please, please. Okay. All right. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with uh, the rest of the bonus hour next on 107.5 WBLS. Oh, thank you, Goose. This segment of the show is brought to you by Nissan. What's up? This is Persia White, and you're listening to The Bonus Hour on 107.5 WBFS. Oh, yeah. The people poll question everybody from yesterday. Would you marry a man with a 14-inch? 35% of you all said yes. 65% of you all said, ouch, no way. Marry. That's different from dating. Dating is sometimes temporary marriage is sometimes temporary too but (laughs) you know what i mean 65 percent of you all said hell no here's the new bonus question for the people poll are you currently dating your boss in other words having sex with that's that's what we mean i think that art changed dating to sex on the website he should have where is art You know what? I wish that we had a window that would open up because I swear I would pack his... uh, I'd throw it out the window. Anyway, are you currently having sex with your boss? And that goes for you if you happen to be in a legitimate relationship where everybody knows. If you're jumping off with... If it's a sneaky, clandestine meeting after hours in his office. Are you boinking your boss? Yes or no? Call in number 11 on the phones right now at 866-GET-WENDY. He's going to pick up passes for Orgasms, the play. This play is so talked about, unbelievable. It's downtown at the Soho Playhouse. And your passes are going to be for next Thursday's showing. Now, before the show next Thursday, there's a pre-show reception hosted by me, Wendy Williams. We'll be able to meet and greet. There'll be drinks and hors d'oeuvres there. And we'll be able to chat with each other. A pre-show reception 
is lights up, music low. We can actually hear each other. There's not like a club. It's a reception. So you'll get passes for the play plus the pre-show reception. And I'm going to the reception right after I get off the bonus hour. As fast as I can get down there to Soho Playhouse, I'll be there. And I'm bringing um, some of the people from the show so you get a chance to meet them. You know, Art will come and, you know, whatnot. Um, you know, maybe Zoe will, and stuff like that. Just so that you can put faces to, you know, what all the hell is going on. But most of all, I'll be there and I'm hosting this reception. And it's next Thursday. So if you're free and you would like to go... And also enjoy one of the most talked about plays of the year, Orgasms the Play. Oh, it examines the relationship between men and women and, and, you know, all that and whatnot. Caller number 10 or 11. Caller number 11 wins the passes right now at 866-GET-WENDY. Diamonds are forever. Hold one up, then caress it. Touch it, stroke it, undress it. I can see every part, nothing to hide in the hurt of my heart. Somebody says that she produced the song. Too much going on about this woman, Shirley Bassey. The point is, is that Kanye West isn't scared. Hey, Wendy, I see your pictures from the red carpet last night. Why do you have on sandals? Someone at my job said you looked a hot mess because of those slippers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't have on sandals. I had on house shoes. <laughs> you know what I had on? I had on a pair of ballet flats. And why did I have them on? Because I'd been out of the house since 6 o'clock in the morning. Because regardless of, who, of how I was photographed on the red carpet for my own show, all the interviewing was from the waist up. So what do I care for nothing? You know, I'm not there walking the red carpet to present and all like that. I'm there doing work. You're damn right. I had on a perfectly fabulous um, halter dress, nice hair and, and makeup and stuff, and some damn ballet flats. flats. The, ones that, the ones that are made of suede that you can literally roll them up like, like, like this and put inside your bag. That's right. I had on ballet flats. I said it on the radio. I'm wearing ballet flats. I wasn't. Where, no, I'm not. Why, why should I wear heels? I've been out all damn day. And it wasn't a, it wasn't a flat day yesterday. I had to um, wow the sales department over at my label for my book, Double Day Random House. 50 people, you know, who were p- expecting to pitch my book. That's where my heels were necessary. I had to walk in like the main character of my book. Ritz. Hello. And um, and so by the time I got to the red carpet, that's a waist up thing. You know, it's me and the microphone from the waist. I mean, please. Now it would have been a hot mess if that's actually what I thought was the fashion sense. <laughs> but I knew what I was doing full well. <laughs> oh, they might have locked me up. The fashion police would have come right along. Sure. The same person who's talking says, and I do have a question. I'm currently married, but I still talk to my first love. And that has been with his... Oh, excuse me, my first love that has been with his girlfriend for over six years, on and off. Now who's a hot mess now? Look at you. Goose, get off the buttons. What are you doing? You can't read crap from upside down. Art is lost in the abyss. As a matter of fact, you know what? Uh, Shakira, open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Take Art's jacket. Let's see you. Throw it out. Throw it out there. Take Art's bag. Take his house keys. Throw them in the garbage so that he has a problem getting in tonight. Let's take all of his stuff and put it out. Since he wants to be so out there, tell him to enjoy life out there. Here, take his cell phone. Take his BLS pen that he seems to covet so much. Let's turn off his computer. And that's that. Keep all of his stuff out there. Since he enjoys being out there so much. Goose, don't you press another damn button. (laughs) Now, apparently, you're the one who's the hot mess woman. You're married, still talking to your first love. He's had a girlfriend for over six years. Listen to what she goes on to say. We did sleep together once before. I still have feelings for him, Wendy. I've never gotten over him. He tells me that he loves me and never... Listen to... Now, who's a hot damn mess? <laughs> I'm just playing with you. Obviously, you're only kidding with me. Hey, 
I know that they were in style, but not a good fashion idea, she says, of my shoes. Yeah, no, I did it purposely. My feet, please. At the end of a 12-hour day, these size 11s swell up to an easy 13 <laughs> if I stay in shoes all day. Heels, that is. Neither of us is kids with our current. My husband knows about my indiscretion. He's not upset that I did it. He's upset about the person that I did it with. What do I do about both relationships? I mean, you have to re-examine your marriage at this point. You know what I mean? You, have, you really do have to re-examine your, your marriage. And I know why your husband's upset. Right? It's not about the sex. It's that you were with your first love. Your, uh, your husband understands a deeper thing, which a lot of men don't. That emotional connection is more powerful than a physical connection. You follow what I'm saying, Goose? You're, yeah. a, you're a mature man. Yeah. 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 It's time to reevaluate before you do have children with your husband. Then it just becomes real messy. You know what I mean? Angelina Jolie, they're saying that, you know, they're questioning how she adopted this little girl that she has, Zahara. The authorities have ordered a full-blown investigation. Um, the little girl's eight months old. As you know, Angelina adopted this girl from Ethiopia, came back to the United States where the little girl was, you know, quite sick. And, and Angelina, with the help of good medical, uh, nursed her back to health. But the, um, the, world, the wide horizon for children, which is a U.S.-based agency representing Angelina Jolie, um, is being accused of misleading the African authorities. The documents that were filled out in court stated that Zahara's mother was dead when, in fact, Zahara's mother is an alive 18-year-old seamstress who gave birth to the little girl after rape. Oh, my gosh, Goose, please don't do me any favors. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you're doing your best. What is that? Yeah, now you're just pressing anything. Please turn that off. Please, please. <laughs> Paris Hilton, there's another investigation going on. She's being... Well, the Baltimore police are looking into allegations that Paris Hilton plied kids with alcohol and weed to loosen them up for the Simple Life interns. The one that was... That was last season, right, Shakira? I think it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Detectives are planning to do full-blown interviews with the teens involved. The claims are, um, are surrounding a November incident, last November. The informants have described wild nights of partying, including karaoke and dancing on pool tables and spankings from drag queens. Now, Paris is 24, and she was in Maryland shooting the, surreal life, or the Simple Life interns. And they say if this is found out, she could face a year in prison and a $1,000 fine on marijuana charges. Nicole Richie, they say, wasn't pres present at all. Is this Nicole Richie planting a story? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> all of a sudden. <coughs> all of a sudden. The incident involves Paris giving the teens whiskey at a restaurant. One teen is claiming she loaded us up. Do oh, damn. Damn, it's time to go. All right, you all. Well, I appreciate you all being here today. Don't forget to tune in on Monday. Oh, no. Wait, turn that off for a moment. Here he comes. He's looking at all his crap outside the door and wondering what the hell's happening. Here he comes. See, that's what happens when more of your job is out there in the hall than it is in here. I'm trying to get tickets. Right. I got them. Oh, really? Gwen came in here and brought me the tickets, so you weren't really back in promotions. I'm you were the team. Look, that involved a simple asking at the door. If nobody had anything, then you come back in here. No, she Goose was like, is pressing. I'm talking about somebody being raped to have a baby, and Goose is pressing the DS sound. Oh. Exactly. I'm trying to follow up on your thing. Oh, shut up. She threw me at the house. Yeah, have fun looking for your keys, too. You all have a good weekend. Vaughn's up next with the Quiet Storm. Love you for listening. Thank you, Kanye. Bye-bye. Wendy Williams Broadcast Day.